Coming up, it's time for Twit. We've got a great show starting off. Matt Honan talks about how he got hacked hard. We've also got a visit from Kara Swisher of All Things D. Patrick Norton, my own buddy, is here from Techzilla. Uh, Justin Robert Young and Ed Bott, too, will talk about the latest news next on Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by the new Winamp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one-click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full-length CD listening parties. Download it for free at winamp.com slash Android. Video bandwidth for Twit is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 365, recorded August 5th, 2012. Sharks and Nazis. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Go to My PC from Citrix. Go to My PC connects you directly to your Office Mac or PC from any other computer and from your iPad and iPhone too. Sign up for a 30 day free trial right now at gotomypc.com. Use the promo code TWIT. And by FreshBooks, the easy online invoicing app for small businesses that saves time and gets you paid faster. Join over 3.5 million FreshBooks users and try the service free for 30 days of unlimited use at FreshBooks.com. Make sure you tell them you heard it about it on Twit. And by the new Squarespace. Squarespace introduces a new content management system, making it faster and easier to create a high-quality website or blog, plus more than 50 new features, including mobile responsive designs with automatic device scaling. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TWIT8. And by audible.com. Sign up for the Platinum Plan and get two free books. Visit audible.com slash twit2. And don't forget to follow Audible on Twitter. User ID audible underscore com. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. A look at the week's tech news. And what a panel we have today. My God, I'm, I'm, I'm verklempt. Starting, uh, we'll start from uh, right to left, Kara Swisher. From All Things D, great to have you, Kara. Hi. It's great to see you once again. Uh, Mr. Patrick Norton from Techzilla. Hey, everybody. Part of the Discovery Networks. Woohoo! Uh, great to have you. And, of course, our show, Twitch, This Week in Computer Hardware. Great show, boy. Last week when you are doing it here, and that was cool. It was fun. It was fun to see you guys. Yeah, that was awesome. Mr. Justin Robert Young of Hello. NSFW and author... No, well, I, I, uh, I, I, I can say that I'm a friend of Patricia editor, Harkins Bradley. A friend of the amazing Patricia Harkins yeah. Bradley who has a very hot book we'll talk about it called Diamond Club mm -hmm. uh, that is rising up through the charts. Burning up the charts. Burning up the charts. Literary uh, phenomenon. On the iBook store. Just an incredible <laughs> thing. And I think you know, I don't, you know, she's kind of a recluse, but I think you know her. So we'll get, she is, we'll she get is. the inside story there from you. And yeah, everybody's everybody in the chat room is doing, <laughs> doing this. There, there I got to do it right. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Quiet. Ixnay on the Iman Day. <laughs> and uh, Ed Bott is also with us. Great to see Ed. Boy, I've known Ed for so many years. Former editor of... <laughs> I like to throw this in, Ed. Of uh, Was it PC... What was it? PC Computing? PC Computing. Editor of PC Computing. And before that, managing editor of PC World. PC World, which too. Which is when you and I used to be... We, we used to do... Uh, well, you did John Dvorak show on right, the radio. and John would drag you in, and uh, it was great to have you. Yeah, well, he'd go off. I don't know where he'd go, and I'd come <laughs> in and take John's place. <laughs> Ed does the Ed Bot Report on ZDNet, a great ZDNet blog talking about mostly Microsoft, but uh, anything else you feel like talking about. Uh, yeah, there will be some uh, Google and iCloud stuff this week, I'm pretty sure. Good. <laughs> Well, we'll find out. But before we get into the meat of the matter, I wanted to introduce Matt Honan. I've known Matt for quite some time. You might remember him from Gizmodo. Uh, and are you working for Wired now, or are you just freelancer, Matt? I, I am. I'm, I'm a full-timer at Wired now. Full-timer at Wired. And uh, he, uh, I read an article that just terrified me, a blog post that you wrote on your blog uh, about getting hacked. And it's a, if you, you can read it at emptyage.com if you, if you want to. Uh, read the story, but I thought we'd get Matt on because I think it's a, I don't know, I think this is a, um, 
a kind of morality tale for the the cloud generation. What yeah, happened? I, mean, I, I I think that there's several things that are interesting about it. Uh, it I think it can it you know it can we, we're all sort of increasingly relying on cloud services, and uh, a lot of us, myself at least, uh, tend to link accounts together, and um, both of those things when combined can make for some really dangerous situations. So you had an iCloud account. Right. Uh, and right. you turned on uh, a feature of iCloud, which I think is actually a useful feature. It's the remote wipe feature. So they've had for a while with the Find My iPhone, you could remote wipe a lost mm -hmm. iPhone. And they now have, and I think this is new in Mountain Lion, it's, I don't remember it before, the ability to remote wipe a laptop. It's, it's, it, 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 was, it was certainly a Lion feature because I haven't upgraded okay. Mountain Lion on okay. my... Uh, on, on my MacBook yet. Uh, but yeah, and, and uh, so what happened, um, if you ready for me to get into it, what happened was uh, Friday, uh, I I'd le left work a little early and was home uh, just before 5 o'clock and I started playing with my daughter and my phone died, um, or it looked like it died, and I went to go plug it in. Uh, and when I plugged it in, uh, it started up to the screen, the, the, the start screen, like the initial start screen that you get when you first get a new iPhone. Um, it says plug into iTunes. I thought, oh, that's weird, but, you know, things happen. And I went downstairs to connect it to my uh, Mac because I'd, I'd backed up really recently uh, to my desktop and uh, restored from that backup. Oh, I'm sorry, I should say, when I tried to log into iCloud, it, it said my password was wrong. And I, I, again, I just I didn't think that much of it. I went downstairs, flipped open my MacBook, and uh, it almost instantly went to a gray screen and asked for a PIN to log in, a four-digit PIN. And at that point, I knew I had real problems and what, what turned out that it happened was that someone had hacked into my iCloud account using basically social engineering techniques and they were able to remote wipe my iPhone, iPad and MacBook and because I'm a terrible computer user I hadn't backed up my MacBook in a really long time. Well and you did something else bad which was uh, you had iCloud as your uh, password recovery for both Gmail yeah. and Twitter. I actually, just Gmail. Uh, ah. So that that was, yeah, that really exasper exasperated things. So what happened uh, <laughs> next was that uh, the, the technology offense was basically, and I, I've been in touch with the person who hacked into my account. They were ultimately trying just to get my Twitter. They just wanted my because you had you had the Gizmodo Twitter account. They weren't even trying to get to the Gizmodo Twitter account. They just wanted uh, Matt. They just wanted Matt. The they, the Gizmodo Twitter account was just a bonus. They didn't even realize it was connected until they got into mine. Um, at, at some point, you, you can link Twitter accounts. And so at some point, um, when I worked at Gizmodo, I had linked my Twitter account with Gizmodo's Twitter account so I could you know not have to log in and log out every time from the web. Um, right. And that hadn't been undone since I, since I left. Even though you had left Twitter. I mean, Gizmodo, yeah. Right, uh, yeah. Um, so I was still linked. They didn't actually have password level access to the Gizmodo uh, Twitter account. They just had password level access to my Twitter account. So uh, what they did was they they used a social engineering technique to get to my iCloud account. They in, uh, used the my .Mac email as the backup email for Gmail. Got into my Gmail and they used Gmail as the uh, account verification for Twitter and got into my Twitter account. Um, <laughs> Wow. Now, you did a few things wrong, and I, there's going to be pedantic people I know in our chat room who said, well, if you had only done this, this, and this, and, and uh, of course, but this is the kind of thing we're all doing, and this is kind of the reason I think it's a morality tale. Did, you at first thought your password maybe had been hacked or brute forced. Right. Yeah, that was my initial suspicion. I mean, I, I just thought that, you know, I had, an, I had a seven-digit alphanumeric password, and... That's pretty weak. I've had it for years, yeah, and that's pretty weak. And, and like, I just haven't changed it in years out of laziness. I don't use it anywhere else, but that's not a good password. I mean, most of my passwords, I use one password, and most of my passwords now, the new password generator, you know, 15 characters, 16 right. characters. And uh, so I, I thought, okay, well, someone, someone, you know, used some sort of technique to crack my password. Uh, a lot of other people were speculating that, that uh, you know, some, that someone had, had set up uh, some sort of intercept to, to, you know, a keystroke logger or something. Uh, but as it turned out, um, both the hacker told me and Apple subsequently verified, Apple Tech Support verified with me, uh, someone called Apple Tech Support at 4.30 on Friday, or about 4.30 on Friday, uh, claimed to be me, knew some details, uh, knew enough details, and um, was able to have a temporary password issued. Oh. Um, 
when the temporary password is issued, they are able to log into iCloud and completely change the password. And that was kind of step one. Step two was wiping all my stuff so that I couldn't go in and, and stop them. And step three was going into my Gmail and getting my Twitter. Step four was they deleted my Google account. And then they just went crazy on my Twitter account for several hours uh, you, Friday evening. You say the hacker contacted you. H how do you know it's him or her? Uh, I, I should say I'm not positive that it's him or her, but they've given me details that allow that they've given me enough details, including some account details, that I know that if it wasn't the person who actually did it, that the person was certainly involved in it. They they know stuff that something right. that someone else wouldn't be able to to tell me. And they were targeting your Twitter account. That was what this whole thing was about. Was so they could put stuff on your Twitter account. I mean, the guy said we just we just want your Twitter account. Uh, we just did it. For it's not. Uh, he said we didn't have anything personal against you. <laughs> You've got that account back. I do have that account. Back. I've got now all my accounts back, and Apple has my MacBook. Uh, I mean, the big priority for me is, is recovering my data. I've got a, a young uh, child, and I, I, I just hate thinking of all the pictures that I would use if I lost all my data. No kidding. Anybody have yes. any questions for Matt? <laughs> well, I mean, well, what, do they, what do they put up on your Twitter account? Crap. Uh, it, was there know, spam? Link, Why were they were they trying to make money off of it? What were they? Was it for the lulls? Links to, links to some YouTube videos, links to some other exploits they'd done, uh, some you know, basically racist, homophobic statements. Uh, just you know, just. So you you were you were just someone with a with a bunch of followers, and they wanted a platform to to yell and scream like idiots. I think basically, yeah, and, and they liked that it was a three letter Twitter account. Ah. My, kind of my name. It's, it's at M A T, which means you you joined Twitter very 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 early. I guess so. And I, made yourself I, a target. I've got a question here. Yes, Ed. Um, Matt, do you do you feel in in some sense? I know this might be a slightly insensitive question to ask, but do you feel lucky in a way that these guys weren't? Uh, evil and malicious and skillful enough to hide their tracks for days or weeks while they mined your information and maybe tried to social engineer some of your contacts? Certainly, absolutely, 100%. I mean, the, the, when I was, the first thing I did was call, uh, before I even realized that my Gmail had, had gotten hacked, first thing I did was call Apple, and I was on the, on the phone with their tech support department for a very long time, and I kept telling them, I gotta get off the phone and call my bank. Because, uh, I mean, I was really weird, worried that they were immediately going to go into my, you know, online bank. Once you get into somebody's email, you can get everything. And I was worried they were going to go into my online banking, go into, you know, any number of other accounts and, and just uh, clean me out. That was my big concern at the time. But, but you also have, I mean, you, you have, I'm sure, a very impressive address book. Patrick uh, just with... changed his Patrick just changed his Twitter <laughs> password for the for the second time in twenty four hours. I think hours. you're not alone. I think yeah. there's people listening right now who are all furiously. First thing I did when I uh, heard this is I uh, I put turn on two factor authentication on my Google account. But go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Ed, go ahead. That, that's okay. So you must have a pretty impressive address book uh, with you know contacts that if somebody wanted to social engineer you know people you know uh, people at Apple people at uh, Google, people, you know, people who, who are your sources, uh, they could do a, a fair amount of damage and they could actually use exploits and install key, log key loggers on those people's machines. So in a sense, uh, I mean, as a wake-up call goes, this is a very painful and ugly one, but the, the damage is, is hopefully contained in a way that it wouldn't have been if somebody had been truly malicious and evil. Yeah, it was uh, it was certainly a wake up call to me. I hadn't, I, I, to be honest, with you, I hadn't considered, uh, you know, using social exploits to get to other people um, for my account. Uh, it, it was, it was, it could. It, I mean, I, I, I hate to say it, but I'm, I'm, I, I just keep thinking I'm, I'm kind of lucky because it really could have been a lot worse. I mean, I'm really, uh, I'm really distraught about my data possibly being lost. But uh, in the grand scheme of things, it was not. Uh, I mean, it could have been so, so, so much worse. I'm just puzzled that Apple. I don't understand how Apple could have been tricked. They get, they, there's, I, I'm not quite ready to, I'm going to, I'm probably going to reveal this in the Wired story tomorrow. I've got um, an email into Apple about this, uh, and I want App, I want it to give them both a chance to respond and to fix this, uh, but there's some information that you can know about someone's account 
that lets you bypass having to answer the security questions. So there's a flaw in their system. I mean, I, I, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's not information that's easy to get. I mean, I, I don't think I could have gotten it. Um, I got the impression from the message the hacker sent you that he knew of this flaw, that he was exploiting a known flaw. Yeah, that's 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 the impression that I have as well. I mean, I, I, I have the impression that this was there were the my understanding is that there are multiple people involved in this and they had multiple areas of expertise. The guy who I've been in touch with uh, and I've only been in touch with one one person. This apparently was 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 his area of expertise. Uh, Matt, did you get a sense that beyond just being a person with a three letter Twitter account that they knew who you were? I got actually the sense that they did not know who I was. So you were, it was just, it could be Ray or Joe on, yeah, on was, Twitter. Was, it was just three letters. That's why they targeted you. That's my impression. I mean, that's, that's what I've, that's what they have said to me. I mean, you know, I don't know. How do you know? And you, like and, and what are you doing now to protect? Obviously you've got backup from now on. Well, I, I, uh, I disabled find my iPhone and find my iPad. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm looking I, at my iCloud. You can erase my desktop computer. If You can mm -hmm. erase my computer at home. Uh, you can remote wipe any uh, of these computers that are on currently. You just press that remote yeah. wipe button. If you got in my iCloud, you could wipe. Don't, don't click that, Patrick. <laughs> something, Leo, something that happens when you do that is that it, it initiates a four-digit pin, okay? And, the, and only the person who presses that button gets to see that four-digit pin. So if, if I'm on the other end, if you're on the other end and someone does that, you, you don't really have any way to stop it. And, and this is one of the things that I think really ought to be fixed about that situation no, is kidding. that, you know, if there's going to be a pin code, it ought to be something that you set up or there ought to be a second password. There ought to be something that lets the person basically stop this in their tracks or that at least, you know, has some sort of, uh, you know, secondary level of authentication before you can pull a trigger and, and, and remotely wipe. A, a, a hard drive. I mean, it's it's wiping a Mac. You know, I kind of gradually got into this. I first I had to find my iPhone set up, and then I was like, oh well, I can do the same for my Mac. And that that's actually quite different than wiping an iPhone. Oh There's yeah. A lot more data on there. Oh and, yeah. Uh, I feel like that ought to be that ought to have better security. That'd be harder to do. Matt, I'm sorry this happened to you, but in a way, I'm really glad that it happened to you, and that the world now knows because of who you are. And I think this is and you're it's a wake up. I think Ed, you said it right. It's a wake up call for everybody. Um, and I hope that watching this, everybody is now going to uh, secure their systems well, as I, best you can. I mean, would you would you turn off the iCloud? Would you turn off the? I mean, obviously you've turned off the the Find My iPhone or, or mm -hmm. Wipe My Computer. Would you suggest everyone do that at this point? Um, if you're backing everything up, I mean, see, this is this is uh, somewhere where I really screwed up, right? I mean, is, is that I wasn't backing up my my uh, I wasn't backing up my Mac. Regularly, um, I, and it's, it's I back up my desktop Mac every day, um, but I had not backed up my MacBook in a long, long oh, time. That's interesting. And, so uh, you were backing up it, just that one you didn't back. And I think a lot of us who have multiple computers kind of assume, well, everything's propagating. I'm I'm fine. Yeah, that was sort of what I. I mean, you know, I just gotten lazy, and yep. um, I, uh, you know, so I so would I recommend that, that everybody turn off Find My iPhone? No, but Find My Mac. I mean, I, I actually probably would turn that off. You know where your Mac is. <laughs> I know you know where it is. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, it's like what somebody asked me, like, what's the greater risk? Is it is it actually having your, you know, your Mac physically taken from your possession, or having someone uh, be able to get into it electronically? And I think it's probably that the greater risk, the more likely risk for yeah. a lot of people with a Mac, it's not a phone, is uh, you know, is 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 having it broken into electronically. Yeah, if you can't find your desktop computer, I think you have bigger problems. Well, I understand maybe you thought it got stolen, blah, 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 but yeah. I, that's not that likely. I also think that uh, I, we learned a lesson about where to send uh, uh, password recovery emails and to have kind of a rotating uh, set of emails and not have them all sent to one place. The hacker obviously thought knew that if he did these erasures, you would be very it would be very hard for you to get everything back. Yeah, uh, obviously, and uh, I, I gather they sort of backtracked. Like they started with Twitter and right. found that okay, well, my Twitter is linked to my Gmail, and then they, when they realized that my Gmail was linked to uh, to, to .mac as the backup, there is the verification there. It was sort of like a jackpot moment for them, mm -hmm. uh, and um, you know, having that all linked together was was a was also a bad idea and it's also something I've changed. I've set up two-factor authentication on my Gmail. That's a pain, by the way. I did it too as soon as I read your story and that's a pain. 
I used to have to do it for work-related emails, and, and I always thought it was a pain. Um, but you know what? I'm doing it now. Yep. You have to run Google Authenticator on your phone. You can authenticate Google's stuff pretty easily. You just add that second factor. But then apps that don't know about two-factor authentication, you have to get a special password generated from Google and enter both passwords. It's Well, it, look, it's a trade-off. Security at best is right. imperfect. There is no patch for human stupidity. Large, hey. multi-billion. No, 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 no. And that's, no, that's not for you, Matt. Not, think not about Matt. that. No, I, 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 Apple's I got that. more money than just about any corporation in North America, and they allowed somebody to social engineer their way into locking at you out of your digital life. Life. That is that's bad. Uh, whether whether that was a, a failure between the the keyboard and the chair um, by whoever was answering the phone, or whether that was you know a, a massive flaw in the way they institute the system, which I think we'll probably find more out in your Wired article tomorrow. But I can't um, wait. Yeah, you know, I, I I that 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 scares the delete expletive out of me. Yep. Um, that sucks, dude. And I'm sorry you went through this. I've, 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 for a long time, I used to write about this, I wrote a few pieces about this for Gizmodo, but I, I really feel like password systems in general, I mean, passwords are just a broken system. I mean, just using mm -hmm. passwords are, are, are a terrible system. I, I know there are a lot of smart people working on other options. We don't have them yet. And, and you know, I mean, the ultimate failure point here was this temporary password that was issued. And I, I just, I mean, this has reinforced every bad feeling I have about our password-based authentication systems. So what would you suggest? I mean, eyeballs or what? I, I'm yeah, curious. I like, what what are, what are I, the I, solutions? I don't know. I mean, I think that. there I think there might be some browser-based solutions for web logins, but uh, right. generally speaking, I, I I don't know. You know, and I've talked to people in the U.S. government about that. Even um, I know that the 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 uh, president has actually set up a special office where they're looking at, at, at sort of working on next generation password things. But, you know, the, one of the big problems is that Microsoft is working on one thing and Google is working on another and Apple is working on another and Facebook's working on another. And uh, everybody sort of has a vested interest in um, right. being identity providers. And that means that, uh, you know, you don't get some sort of top down uh, standard. This gets really important, too, as we start uh, doing virtual money and things like that, because really all of all a financial transaction is is about is authenticating yeah. the two parties. And if you don't have good par uh, authentication systems, and, and we are moving, moving full speed ahead towards digital financial transfers. And, and you know, uh, in all due respect to any PayPal employees in the audience, we, we all know that, that with large multinational banks make a mistake, it's your fault. Right. Yeah. We're going to lock you out of your account forever. I, I, I like second-factor authentication. I think that's a good yeah. start. And I, and I, and I think sending an, a, a four-digit passcode to a cell phone one-time use or having something like Google Authenticator or the Blizzard uh, Authenticator give you these rotating numbers, I think that's, that's a pretty good start. I'm going all cash. You'd have to steal my phone <laughs> yeah. and steal my password. Uh, I'm going straight barter from here on out. <laughs> Matt, <laughs> we're going to let you go. Stop. Thank you. That, Matt Honan, yeah, I'm sorry that right. happened to you. Yeah, if you're Thanks going so. all cash, I'll be at your house. This week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is safer, right? Your mattress or your cell phone? You know, nothing is safe. Nothing's Life is not safe. safe. There you go. Acceptable risk. It, Bye, it's guys. best to own nothing. Thank you, Bye, Matt, Matt Honan. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Thank take you, Matt. care. Sorry this happened to you. We'll look forward to the article on Wired.com. Matt, Wired. take you to see Total Recall. We can feel bad about the future. Did you see? <laughs> did you see that yet, Kara? Is it good? No, I wanted to last night, and I had some work I had to do. But um, I want to. I love the first one. I Me heard too. the second one's not as good, but I loved that first one. I, you can't like rent the first one, which really annoys me. So I spent twenty bucks and I bought it on iTunes. Oh really? <laughs> you can't rent anything you want to see right I know. before a major movie release. They're smart. They're somehow they must be paying attention. But it's <laughs> actually a very dated film. It's funny. Uh, it feels like an old 70s cop show it's still yeah good. it's fantastic it's still a great <laughs> movie yeah, but paul verhoeven is is awesome and yeah. that was like very much him in, in the height of his his uh powers is mad it's very funny. mad genius but i heard this one isn't as good that that you'll wish you'll ha that you have more hands to give the finger to the screen oh, because that's too it's bad. not particularly you know, I, good. I don't care i'm gonna go i don't give i don't care <laughs> did you see batman kara uh, I didn't. I, I didn't. I don't. I'm not a Batman. My kids watched Batman Begins last night. I just. I'm not a big Batman fan. I did like the Avengers, though. I'm a. I'm a big sci-fi fan, but I don't know why I didn't see this one. I think you know, and I realize this. There's Marvel people and there's DC people, and there's a very different. Yes. It's like men are from Mars, women are from Venus. <laughs> well, and now it's was, like it's I was written born large. In now it's pop culture. It's, like it's, now, yeah. yeah. Now it's that's like. So, you know, so my, Ed, my, you're my, a DC guy. Oh, absolutely. Me Superman, too. Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, the whole bit. That's it. Right. And these Marvel guys, they feel like kindergarten ca characters. Marvel. They no. feel like Fisher Spider Price was characters. Great. That was a great film. That was. A great I film. love Spider Man. I, I love. I love all the. I'm a, I'm a Marvel. Guy. Make mine Marvel. That's... See, I'm telling you. Yeah. No. So I'm telling you. There's. Patrick, you no, want to weigh Batman. in? <laughs>
<laughs> my favorite comic book character is the Midnighter. Um, yeah, see, and it I goes downhill from there. Some indie crap, some weird indie <laughs> crap. I knew it. That man is so depressed. It's just like he what? is. In fact, that whole I, series, that no. the Chris Nolan series, is is creepy. It really Batman is. Batman is creepy. Creepy. It's An creepy. angry adult male with a bazillion dollars spending his life learning every possible moral show. But there's like, what's Dude, the, they're all the, wearing their pajamas. The, it's all no, stupid. But the, the Frank, <laughs> no, they're not. They're not all stupid. They're wonderful commentaries on the human condition. No, the Frank Miller one, there's seven defensive responses to this attack. Yeah. Three of them, you know, incapacitate. That's Four of stuff. them kill. One of them hurts. And then you hear this, like, of course, the next sploosh and the crunchy noise and... Well, Batman's about just being pissed off at the universe. That's why I like Batman because yeah. it's, it's psychologically complex. It's not some guy dressed up in a crazy. It's costume. not Superman. Spider Man's. They're making psycho Superman. Psychologically the new complex. Superman looks good. Oh, the new that, Superman that looks good. That trailer was stupid. You didn't like that trailer? I couldn't Boring. figure out why they were on a fishing boat. Yeah, okay. It was like the perfect storm meets Superman. I didn't really understand that. It looked like a 90s it's, Gap it's, ad. It was just <laughs> depressing. Right, now we degenerated into Boyville. I have two small kids, so I, I can't All right, we're gonna, we're going to break. <laughs> and we'll come back, and we'll actually talk about the tech news. How about that? Mm -hmm. There's some big stories, and uh, we got a great team. In fact, Kara, I hope you don't mind, but I'd like to revisit Yahoo because you know oh, more. All right. You know more about what's going on inside Yahoo I've than any human. I've got a good human. one coming out soon. I got a good one. Oh, I got see, see, see. Nice. Kara's a sly cove, though, because we've had you on the show when you've had scoops and you've sat on them. <laughs> you've you've known I don't stuff. Sit on them. I just haven't finished them. You just know sick. stuff and you don't nest in them. Like so an I want you to tell all. I work them for scoops. Legal Laporte. I work for All Things Digital. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I don't give you any money, do I? <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm, I'm but I'm going to that guy's house and getting the Should, money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he stores it in his mattress. Jerry, Jerry stores it in his mattress. We're going to talk for a brief moment about our friends at Citrix who do remote access and, by the way, secure SSL. There has never been an exploit. Uh, using go to my PC, and I can't say that about most of the. Yeah, knock on wood. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that. It's, they're they're kind of going. Don't tough. say that. But uh, no, seriously, there's been plenty of exploits with many other remote access products, but never with go to my PC. And that's because these guys do it right. It uses NAT traversal, uses SSL. Uh, you don't have to punch a hole in your firewall. That eliminates a whole category of security issues. If you've not used go to my PC, this is a great time to try it. Hey, it's vacation time. Kids are out of school. Your weather's great. You want want to go to the pool. You don't want to be at work. Leave, but before you do, get on your Mac or your PC, install Go to My PC. You can do it free for 30 days, and then take your iPad or even your iPhone with you, and you can access that office computer and do anything you could do if you were at work. You could send or receive email, run any program, access any network resource. It's all there. And on these Retina displays, I have to say, it. And sometimes your your iPad has more resolution than your computer at work. You could do it all. It's fast. It's easy. It's secure. And it's free for 30 days. Visit gotomypc.com. That orange try it free button, that's the one you want to hit right there. And then you're, you're going to need a promo code. If you click that, see that promo code there? It's TWIT. It's easy. Four letters. T-W-I-T. That's all you need. 30 days free. Go to my PC. The folks at Citrix have been doing this longer than anybody else. You can trust them. And I use them all the time. Hey, a note. We are doing a Mars landing special tonight. It's the night we were talking before the show. I'm excited. Oh, it's going to be a big deal. It's going to be awesome. Thank you. Wow. You, Kara, it feels like the younger generation isn't into space like uh, like I. I mean, I watched Cronkite, watched Apollo. Well, you're yeah. younger than me, but I mean, it just seems like the younger generation. What? You guys I'm not the younger generation, so I don't know what to say. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying is that you love space, right? No, no, not really. Oh, <laughs> oh that's uh, right. Megan, you work Megan for Walt. Does. I'm Megan sorry. Megan loves it. She dressed that's up awesome. She went to space camp, Megan did. That's right. So. You told us that. Yeah, she's like yeah, an with astronaut. Larry and Sergey and yeah. uh, Piero Midiar and uh, e uh, Elon Musk. They all went together. Uh, Wait a minute, they one. all went to a space camp together, like a special yeah, rich in Alabama years space ago. Years ago, yeah, space camp in Huntsville. Wow, yeah. did they actually awesome. have a launch? They had they had suits and everything. It was very <laughs> nerdy. It was like super nerdy. I think they did all kinds of space campy things. I don't know. Like Drake Tang and like you know. Had Velcro no, fights? No, I think they were. They, they had a little mission. It wasn't real, but I think they had a little. I don't know. <laughs> they didn't I, actually I, go I, to I space. Listen. There was enough money among the six of them. They probably could have launched to something in the well, space. You know, Elon Musk like, is, right? Yeah. If there wasn't a Ritz Carlton near in Huntsville, I wasn't going. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Standards. So she doesn't like space. We will do live coverage. The. Uh, Curiosity after it's. How long has it been flying? It's 18 months, something like that. You know, Patrick. Seven years. You know, actually, seven, seven years. <laughs> They launched that seven years ago. 
I, yeah. I made that. Wow. Says well, it's been in the making in the studio. <laughs> it's been in the making for seven years, but it's been flying for nothing. We're seeing the chat room months. says anything from three years to eight months, somewhere in there. Yes, <laughs> something like that. Eight a months. long time. Eight and a half. I months. think it's. I think it's amazing. It is amazing, yeah. and the stuff they're going to bring back is amazing. I just don't have. You know, it's. I'm, I'm sure it's going to bring back so much important well, data. For one us. of the things they're looking for is evidence of of life. I can't decide right. if I want to wake my son up tonight so he you can should. witness it. Well, he also might be like, what was that, huh? And then fall back asleep. Doesn't matter. <laughs> That's Doesn't true. matter. When I took I... Henry to see Barry Bonds hit a home run in the World Series. He'll never remember it, but he was there. <laughs> <laughs> he was there, and that's all that matters. And then he can tell his grandkids, I got up in the middle of the night with Daddy, and we watched something. I don't know. Well, you can just make sure that you put on the Twit coverage tonight. Here comes the plug. Yeah. There you go. 10 <laughs> p.m. Hosted Pacific. By, yeah, hosted by Tom Merritt, Phil Plate. Uh, the Dr. bad Kiki. astronomer. Yeah, yeah, the bad astronomer who is fantastic, the best in the business in, in terms of uh, describing space. He's so stuff. bad, he's good. He is. He's yeah. better than bad. He's good. And uh, we we have a twenty minute interview with Steve Sell on the entry, descent, and landing, the EDL, which is that seven right. minutes of terror that we've right. been talking about. Can Yahoo be fixed? <laughs> Let's ask Kara Swisher. Oh. So, Kara, you you have always had this inside track. Mm -hmm. Into memos, you know what's going on in Yahoo. Were yeah. you you were you surprised when Marissa Meyer took the CEO job? Um, you know, I, ugh, you know, on that Sunday, I was given a tip that it was her, and I just couldn't get another source on it, which was interesting. And I thought, wow, that's a great idea. And they, I happened to be on a plane when they announced it the next day. But um, you know, it was it was a good idea. I think it came out of um, a little bit out of left field, but it was it was kind of an obvious choice if you started to think about it. Do you think um, it was? She, she was it one was, of many. Do you think it was the board that's that? Uh, who? Yes. It was their yes, idea. It was it was Dan Loeb and um, and Michael Wolf uh, on the board. Uh, Dan Loeb mostly driving most of it. He'd spent a lot of time out here recently, um, and I think between him, uh, Michael Wolf, and David Kenny, that was how it was done. It Dan was Dan was the that. dissident investor. Who yes. Uh -huh. Was very unhappy with how Yahoo was going. Yes. Got a yes. seat on the board. Sit three actually. Three seats on the three. board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so, so he kind of now. Did they make the call to Marissa? And what was it? Do you think that talk that convinced Marissa to take the job? Oh, I think she was looking to leave Google. I think there was. I think there was. There, there was. I, I had been following a number of stories of her looking at uh, a bunch of VC firms um, and other places. I think she was uh, starting to look around. I, there was. She hadn't gotten promoted in that last. Larry round, and I think probably, you know, the people in place were in place, and so probably she was looking for a bigger challenge for herself, probably. It felt like you know, a little bit of a snub when she wasn't chosen as one of the yeah. five big... Yeah, set, eight, seven or eight. Or seven, actually. whoever, running the... And she and she got moved from search to, social, or yeah. to local. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't down, really. It just wasn't up, and so right. I think that probably, you know, the people in place are rather young and, and very vigorous and, and not, you know, it's there's only so much room at the top once you start to go to the, right. you know, when you start to do that, and so I suspect she was looking for something uh, bigger, and this is bigger. This is a chance to really show her management skills or, you know, it's a real challenge for her, so that's, it probably was very appealing to her, I would guess. It's, it's um, a risk. It's yes. a it is I think it's the biggest challenge of any tech business. Well, I mean, you could you could say Rim would be a bigger challenge. <laughs> but <laughs> well, but at least Rim has uh, they have a business Had. right now. And I don't know. I I can't really say. If you ask me what is Yahoo's business, I don't know. I don't know it's what it is. It's a big business. That's not absolutely true. It's very profitable. It's it's not as profitable as it was. It's not as growing as it was, but it's Good God, doing better than most uh, startups that are selling for a billion dollars. Right. It's doing Understood. well. They have they have a whole bunch of different uh, uh, Pri primarily individual advertising. pieces. But so does Prim General Electric. But that's why advertising. that's why it's interesting because there's value, but it's it's you, you've got to figure out some way to capitalize on it. One right. what a lot of people said is that she needs to make a decision between being a content company or a web services company. Mm -hmm. I think the second is what she'll do. I think there's no question. She's going to she's going to double down on advertising tech, I think, and uh, which is a, a completely opposite direction for what Ross Levinson was going to do, the proposal he made to the board. Um, she was she's going to expand and compete with Google. I mean, com they had they were very close to a deal with Google to uh, sort of offload uh, ad tech to them or uh, they were talking to Microsoft. And so I think what's interesting is that I don't think she's going to do that. I think she's going to try to build it up herself and see if she can compete in other ways and differentiating ways 
case, presumably, because going straight at Google is kind of a loser proposition for anybody at this moment. Um, but, you know, she knows Google inside and out, so she could, she certainly was not as involved in that part of the business, the ad business, that's Susan Wojcicki and others, um, but uh, she certainly has a familiarity with the company, so. And we'll when, when Microsoft and, and Yahoo made the deal, Microsoft Bing became Yahoo's search engine, but Yahoo, as I remember it, correct me if I'm wrong, continue mm -hmm. to run the ad business, right, Ed? Isn't yes, that how it I works? I believe that's right, yes. So right. so they are well positioned to be an, an, an ad company. Well, uh, they are one. They are an ad company. It's ad tech. It's whether they're going to do the serving. And, you know, Google essentially right. is 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 the best is has the most powerful ad serving technology around now and so the question yahoo used to but doesn't anymore so it's a lot of uh, investment she's going to have to make to uh, make it so so a lot. so like google they may offer some services like Flickr or yahoo finance but really mm -hmm. their their backbone of the company is the ads they serve on their sites and other sites Others. Third yes, yes, sites. part of it. But a lot of it is premium ad sales, you know, on the, on their major content sites like Yahoo Finance, the home pay. They have three businesses and the, it's just the way it is. It's they've got search, which has been a big money maker for them. And now they've got guaranteed income from uh, Microsoft through that deal, even though it's not performing well, they have a guaranteed deal. The second thing is the home page, which makes that's where they make most of their money. Not people go to Yahoo.com. They make a lot of money on that home page. Yes, there's 700 million people go through there a month. That's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, and then Thirdly, through mail, they make quite a bit of money through their mail, but it's declining. The, 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 both the search and the mail are declining, and so is homepage. And so that's really the problem: is can they make new services that are are so compelling that advertisers want to be on them? And that's hard. What is she going to? She, I mean, there's there's not a magical unicorn, and a lot of the innovations <laughs> going on at startups. And so, can she bring that into Yahoo? She's certainly an exciting uh, choice to a lot of people, and certainly at Yahoo. Um, mm -hmm. She is. I mean, she gave away free food, which was like, <laughs> that story went crazy, except I, I tried to point out, by the way, every web company gives away free food. Yahoo was the We only give away it, free food for crying out loud. <laughs> but they went crazy. They went crazy at Yahoo, and I kept pointing out to them, like, you know, everyone else gets it already. You're getting something. <laughs> but, you know, they didn't have it. And, you know, this week, I'll, I'll be writing about what she's done this week. Um, but um, she's, you know, she's doing things that other web companies had been doing, and they hadn't, Yahoo's like caught in a time warp or something that didn't get these things. And so we'll see how. You know, the but those point are is superficial, Kara. Yes, absolutely, yes. But they're about cultural change. That this is we're back in the business. A, a new era for yeah. for, for Yahoo. Uh, Kara, can I ask you this? Uh, sure. You said that she was looking to leave. Uh, do you get the sense from talking to principal people in this move that mm -hmm. sh there is any bad blood or that sticking it to Google uh, is part of the challenge <laughs> for uh, oh. Marissa? No, I, I don't think it was bad blood. I just think, she, you know, it just people. It, it, there's 10 people that start together, eight get promoted, and right. you don't, whatever. It happens all the time. It's nothing, that's nothing. I don't think there was bad blood. I think she, uh, you know, she had some challenges there. You could say that about any executive at Google. You know what I mean? Like every one of them has their pluses and minuses. So I think it's not like I'm going to get them. It's that's. I don't yeah. think that. That's not her personality. That, that would, exactly. That'd feel good though, if she did get it. Well, <laughs> well then, and then, but that. Yeah, there's no getting Google. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't there, know. I don't, there is. It does raise the question, though. I mean, there's two. There's two ways. It seems that she could go. She could, uh, you know, Yahoo's already in partnership with Facebook and Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, she, she and and she could kind of create a, uh, a, 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 I always say Axis, but it could be the Allies. But she could create the Allies against Google. Yes. Microsoft, Absolutely. Yahoo, Apple, Facebook. Uh, versus Google, or she could partner with Google. I mean, the same kinds of partnerships she's doing right now with Microsoft, she could instead do with Google. She has inside knowledge. She knows people at Google. Do you think she'll choose one of those two paths, or is she? I don't know. I mean, the search one is interesting because you know they they have this deal with Microsoft, and you know there's Microsoft has failed on a number of performance metrics, from what I understand, and so they certainly could move it over to Google. In that case, there's some regulatory issues, which I think Google's right. aware of, and they're yeah. aware of about Google owning pretty much all of search around the world. So that's <laughs> problematic. Um, Google you know, needs I, Microsoft like Microsoft needed Apple <laughs> for many years. Right. I think I think <laughs> Yahoo going with Google it would be a tough row. I think everyone will. We'll, yeah. 
will get their backs up in search, especially in ad serving. There are a number of different ad serving things. Nonetheless, Google does dominate that area again, um, but they don't dominate it like they do search, I think. Um, so it's a, qu it's a question. She has a lot of choices and certainly people want Yahoo to succeed. I think that's one of the parts that is, um, mm -hmm. it's just a question of whether they can make great products that people want to use. And they really haven't done, that's really at the heart of what the problem is, is they, they, ha they have not made, they've missed pretty much every single trend. Like um, a Pinterest would be a very Yahoo-like thing to have done. So was, uh, you know, Instagram. They had Flickr, you know I mean? So right. it just goes on and on and on about things they didn't take. And so the question is, will she be able to inspire, bring in engineers in that can create things? Or are those people very happy at startups? And that's that's the difficult part for her. What do you um, think of that idea, Ed? You cover Microsoft. Would it be an interesting thing for Yahoo to team with Microsoft, Facebook, and Apple as an anti-Google allies? Well, I think Microsoft is feeling pretty uh, glum about that prospect now. They, they, I think they feel like they dodged a bullet. Didn't they a try to buy, ago. what was it, $31 billion? Yeah, $31 yeah. billion dollars they would have yeah. paid for Yahoo, and that would have made the uh, the Aquantive write down look <laughs> like just uh, the, the That was a, a mere $6.2 billion. Right, you know, so I think I, I, I think any kind of, of tie-up with Yahoo beyond what they've got right now would be a really, really difficult sell. Okay. I agree. I agree. Okay. I think they're I think they're they haven't been able to make the search partnership work. So right. uh, and that's there's all kinds of reasons for that. They they've been spending what I I think at seven hundred and fifty million dollar losses in that you know, online services division every quarter. That's seven hundred and fifty right. million dollars. <laughs> yeah, but now you can argue though that uh, Microsoft has a, a need to take that money and treat it as an investment, yes. not as a uh, as a defensive play. They yeah. they can't afford to live in a world where they don't control search on their devices and where Absolutely. they're at the mercy of Google or someone else. Uh, right. You know, the, well, the new devices, no phones and tablets and stuff, have to have robust search built into them. And 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 if you if you have a new device platform coming out and you have to depend on Google for it, you're in a very, very weak position. So in that sense, the money that they spend in Bing is, uh, is, is sort of reinforcing a, a core aspect of the Windows mobile platforms for them. Yeah, yes, absolutely. I think they can't not be in it. It's just a very pricey investment for them. And I think losing Yahoo would be something... I don't think they want that to happen, although they still haven't fixed the problem with the uh, the perform And then those guarantees do run out at some point. So Yahoo's got to think about what it wants to do. It's very interesting. And you're right, Kara. We'll I think see. we're all rooting for Yahoo. Not because they were an internet pioneer, we all have fond memories of them, but also it's good to have some competition for Google. I want them yeah, to take back that old Navy billboard. Because that old Navy that, billboard, that was so sad. stupid. That was, only San Franciscans know about this, but there was a beautiful <laughs> Yahoo. Yahoo uh, all like yeah. incandescent light bulb billboard, and yeah, yeah, and Old Navy took it over, and then they yeah. put on this LED screen that just has dumb one-liners when I'm going home yeah. to Oakland. It's just Let me see if I can I'm find. Uh, that's uh, here's, what, that's here. where it all went wrong was the billboard. Exactly. <laughs> uh, let, let, me, let me just ask uh, you and, and, and Ed uh, one more thing. Sure. Uh, from a consumer end, I mean, I know for me, following these kind of things, it very much seemed that with Marissa coming in, that Yahoo was overnight looked at differently yeah. uh, than, than what it was before, that there was a possibility that it could be, again, a company that was on the rise from its current trajectory. From you guys talking to your sources, is that the same inside uh, the, the tech community, people that are are, are making decisions that also just are, are informed in running businesses? Is that the same idea that it is, you know, for me on the consumer level? Well, they love, a, everybody loves one of these stories, you know, this sort of young, exciting computer scientist who happens to be a woman too, and a very interesting person comes in. And so they like these stories. Um, I think it's a bigger job than that, but it's certainly an exciting story. And so it adds a little bit of uh, excitement to the, to the, to the situation. I think that uh, within Yahoo, they're thrilled. The techies are at least, um, they're thrilled with her. They think it's fantastic that someone is, uh, so well, you'd like if, if somebody you, with an engine, with an actual yes, engineering degree engine, running yes, the company. The real one. Yeah. What's interesting is that if you think about it, she is the first executive who is an internet executive running this company, who's an actual native born huh. internet executive. Cause Tim Kugel, there really wasn't an internet, you know, there really wasn't he was the first, and so he had come from other places. Terry Semmel was a Hollywood executive. 
uh, Jerry was certainly an internet executive, but again, uh, not like her. You know what I mean? She's a native. She's This is her first job was at Google, which is, is really interesting if you think about it. Um, Scott Thompson was from a different a, a payment background. So she's really the first 100% uh, internet savvy executive running this company. So that's an interesting side. I think about that a lot. So we'll see. I don't think one person can change things unless you're Steve Jobs. And you know what? She's not Steve Jobs. Nobody's Steve Nobody Jobs. Is. And so that's that's the problem. Yeah. And so I, I think they're looking for that story to happen again. And I don't know if that's going to, you know, I think I think she, if, she, if she's judged on that basis, she'll disappoint. If she's judged on uh, getting back some level of innovation and promise there, she'll do she'll do well. We'll see. It's a tough job. Believe me, she doesn't succeed. I won't be surprised because it's so hard. But if she does, it'll be a real coup. Somebody, some it's former signs of life. I think if, it, if it's just signs of yeah. life, everybody yeah. a will heartbeat. Just, would be well, nice. this is a five billion dollar a year company that you're saying signs of life. I mean, well, okay, yeah, you know, you're you right. know, it's yeah. moribund. It's difficult. It's 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 got a bad reputation among as an employer in Silicon Valley. You know, engineers stare at it and quake with fear, but it's still racking up five billion dollars a year in revenue. Oh, that. But that's, oh, that's but that's what's unusual about about Yahoo right now. You've got three major platform companies. Mm -hmm. You've got you know Apple, Google, and Microsoft, all of whom are sort of building f walls and fences and toll gates around their platforms. And then you've got a gazillion startups, mm -hmm. all of whom either want to find a little tiny niche within one of those one or more of those platforms or where their exit strategy is getting purchased by one of those. And to have a company the size of Yahoo that is neither a, a small Comp a, a startup with an exit strategy or owns its own platform is like, you know, how are they, wh what's their route out of this? How do they grow? How do they become something? That's, that's where I don't see much prospect of success for Yahoo. Yeah, she's talked platform a lot internally this past couple of weeks. So I'll tell you that she's certainly said the word platform a lot. So uh, you that's know, I services, think feels, right? That's web yeah, services. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure what she's talking about, but I mean, I think <laughs> the idea is uh, I don't know. I, you know, I think that she's that she's thinking much more heavily that Yahoo's got uh, have, has some differentiating qualities uh, above those other ones that Ed was talking about. So I we'll think see. there's an opportunity. You take Flickr, yeah. you take finance, you take sports. Uh, you give them an API. You mail. say we're Don't a platform. Mail. She's mail. gonna go big into mail. Mail is huge, and Yahoo is really it's it, Yahoo Mail is number three in the market, and it's and it's it's an opportunity. Look what Microsoft did this week with the Hotmail. I uh, think she's gonna go big into mail. I think she is. There's an opportunity yeah. because it, the disappointment I think with Outlook.com was that it really didn't reinvent mail, and everybody is begging for a better system. I don't know what it is. But put some she knows mail. She knows mail. She's she knows very mail. Involved. Gmail. She knows mail. She knows so. mail. Maybe there's a well, magic one the, solution. One of the things that Microsoft did with Outlook.com this week uh, was to try and take a, a tarnished brand, Hotmail, which may have a, a ton of users, but it has very little credibility among the people on this panel, among the people who are watching this show, you know, nobody says, I'm going to go out and get a new Hotmail account and use it to run my business right. working <laughs> yeah, with Gmail. I, and I think Yahoo has kind of the same problem, you know, whether it's Yahoo.com Yahoo mail or Ymail or whatever you call it. Um, you've really got a brand there that doesn't have a lot of credibility in in either business or among the the tech elite so you know they they may have to do something like what microsoft is trying to do with hotmail which is to completely rebrand it uh and completely change the the service on the back end but that is really really hard to do the people who use yahoo mail when i ask people almost everybody uses yahoo mail there's two reasons one they use it for their spam address <laughs> Right? Everybody's <laughs> nodding in the audience. That's where they dump their spam. <laughs> or two, you're an AT&T customer, and Yahoo Mail is what you get as an AT&T DSL customer. Yeah, that was an old deal. That was a very old deal. Yeah, I remember still, that. Still alive. It's the value. Yeah, you know, the only thing is it's a very good product. That's not, you know, I think Walt has given it very good reviews. I like so. Yahoo Mail, especially if you play for the Plus version. It's a very, good, it's a very good product. It's yeah. not, but it, it definitely needs updating. And the question is, is mail the place to be waging the big fights? I don't know. You know, it's just, it's a, it's, it's. She's been given a big, long, uh, 
amount of time by this board to do these things and spending some money. So I think she's not going to be thinking about Wall Street going forward. Good. I think she's going to be thinking about the products. That's, that's my impression. That's what you got to do, at is, least for yeah. a while. Is the importance yeah. of mail the, the opportunities for data mining that gives them? To yes. be able to, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> we haven't done as much as well, they everybody could, else is. We don't talk about that. Yes, of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. But what you, the opportunity is two-faced because the consumer-facing opportunity is to solve the problem that is mail. Yeah. Right. Email's broken badly. And if you could, I like this, you know, I don't think people know about it, but the sweep feature in uh, Outlook.com right. is actually great. Yeah, there's some it nice. Was in, it was in Hotmail for a, over a year, right? Uh, and they've they've surfaced it. Uh, in Outlook.com, uh, and and made it made it more obvious, and it really is a. Uh, I, in fact, I was going through my old Hotmail account, which is now Outlook.com, and uh, cleaning it up today, and I was able to, you know, get rid of several hundred crud messages just sitting there in the inbox, and simultaneously set up rules to make sure that the crud doesn't come back. So that was, you know, that was pretty revelatory. But good know. luck finding it because I know it's here somewhere <laughs> in this top bar, and I just oh I think you have to click an email click first, yeah. and then you've got sweep. It's like finding a feature in a haystack. <laughs> well, but no, but you don't want that command. I think, You're right. I think that interface is good because that if that command were there and you hadn't selected it a doesn't message, do anything. What would you get when right. you click that? Right. 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 So it's smart about what you're doing. I'll tell you what, I think Gmail for me, getting a little bloaty. It feels like every new thing that gets added to Gmail is something that getting? is taking away from the... <laughs> well, it's clear that that's what Microsoft thought because they made a video where they took what is obviously Gmail and started crossing off stuff. There's the video. Yeah. And said, hey, yeah. uh, look at this. This is, of course, what they replaced on the right side there, all those useful things, that more ads, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Well, actually, that right-hand panel contains uh, it contains chat, or it contains social networking uh, information about the contact that you have. It, it only contains ads if you're looking at a, a piece of mail from a contact who's not in your address book, not oh. in one of your social networks. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, or such. So if it's if if you know Leo, if you sent me a message to my uh, Outlook.com address, as soon as I open that, the, the thing on the side would show me our social connections, and then huh. I could also click the chat button up at the top, and we could chat directly there without having to leave the the mail environment. Yeah, that is so there is some smarts in that uh, yeah. uh, in that right panel. But you've just identified the problem, which is there's there are, is some. Uh, very, very intelligent design uh, and, and you know, very cool new features in there. But, you know, somebody like you, you're not going to notice it because you're not going to use it because you already have you're, – you're in the Gmail right. world. Yeah. Right. You have, a, you have a tremendous investment there. Uh, and I think the only people that Microsoft can pry away from Gmail are those who have it as kind of a secondary address that they use for the things where they don't want to use their real address. <laughs> You know what's really sad is a lot of these features. Years ago, I saw Brad Garlinghouse, used to be head of communications at Yahoo for many years, um, showed me a lot of this kind of thing years ago, and it just never got productized at Yahoo. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd see a lot of things, like a lot of stuff that's showing up today, Yahoo had many years ago, but it never made its way into the product. And that was what was, that's the problem they faced there. And I, I do think though, if they create a better product, people will go to it. I don't agree with you. I, I've switched a million times emails. And I think if it's a, it's a, a quantumly better, it's a question is, it's got to be quantumly better. Um, but I think people do will switch if it's a better product. That's, it seems yeah, I agree. Me. If there's some, you got to put something in there that people go, wow, I got to have that. Yeah. Google tried that with priority inbox. It was an interest. It was a good idea. It's not really well implemented. Uh, sweep is actually a good idea, but it's yeah. hard to find. Nobody also, knows about there's, it. Also, there's an opportunity. Google Mail is bloated, like bloated. Right. Like right. It, it reminds me, I'm like, where, what, do they just hire all these Microsoft people over there or something? I, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I just, it's like, I, there's a huge opportunity. Oh, I'll tell you what, Gmail, anybody who put share next to view and download in all of my picture attachments on, <laughs> on Gmail should be shot. Do you accidentally share a lot of I, pictures? I, you I, I, at least... Four times a week, we'll accidentally click share Whoops. because it's put in the middle <laughs> right. between view and, and download on every image attachment in Gmail, and it's infuriating. One thing we learned this week, and we're going to talk about it in just a bit, uh, we actually learned a lot about Apple and the Apple-Samsung trial, including mm -hmm. the fact that Apple actually does care what consumers think and even surveys them despite 
all appearances. <laughs> uh, so we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Great panel. Boy, this is just, I feel like, I feel like finally I can ask all these questions that those lousy panels from the last few weeks really couldn't answer. So <laughs> yeah. If you don't mind, we're going to go back in time. Ed Bott is here from ZDNet, longtime friend. Great to have uh, him, Justin Robert Young. And I do want to talk about Diamond. the hottest book yeah. in several generations. Absolutely. Explode it's sexy. It's smart. It's well-dressed. <laughs> we'll talk about it in just a second with Justin. Also, uh, my good friend. It's always nice to have you. Patrick Norton from Texilla. How's things going at Texilla? Good. How's Discovery treating you? You know, they seem to be really nice people. I got to go talk to the, the, the basically we did a presentation myself and our VP of programming and uh, Jim Lauderback, our CEO. And um, it was exciting. There were like 300 people in the room. and a few In Rockville? Uh, in Silver Spring, Maryland. Silver Spring, yeah. You know, I just uh, just so you know, uh, I, I wrote one of the, I covered uh, Discovery's beginnings at the Washington mm -hmm. Post oh. 100 years ago. Oh. And I'll never forget John Hendricks, the founder of, uh, of Discovery many years ago. I, it started to explode a little bit, but it was still tiny and it, it got lucky because it got on Liberty Media's mm -hmm. uh, stations and stuff and I said what's the secret of your success it's the best quote I've ever had in a story ever in my whole life but I said to Hendricks who's an un a quirky guy the guy who founded Discovery I said what's the big secret to your success kind of a softball and he said Kara sharks and Nazis Nazis and sharks <laughs> and it still is <laughs> in fact and, uh, are you I guys doing in shark week on uh, Texilla I was just down in sharks uh, and Nazis. Monterey Bay Aquarium and uh, Hopkins see? no but sharks I, I and Nazis, sharks see? and Nazis Hey, I, next I, I, week. It's the best quote ever in my life that I've used, period. There's never been a better hey, one. When Shark. you find something that works, don't fix it. Just keep yeah. doing it. Exactly. <laughs> How many years? Shark Week is the longest running... Uh, 25 years. 25 years. Wow. It's I don't know. You can combine sharks and Nazis some way. I don't know. Oh, I think you could. Actually. Feed I, Nazis to sharks. And, and the less yes. popular Hitler Weekend, which was canceled <laughs> after one year. That wasn't so good. No. We're brought to you today. And, of course, Kara Swisher is here from All Things D. What a great panel. So, so much fun. So much insight. I'm just dripping with insight. <laughs> <laughs> I should have worn my insight deodorant. We're brought to you today by FreshBooks.com. Uh, FreshBooks is the ultimate solution for small business owners who don't, who does, who don't like doing invoicing. FreshBooks does it and makes it easy. In fact, I was a FreshBooks user for a long time. Amber MacArthur introduced it to me in 2004. And now I think it's three and a half million users later. Uh, FreshBooks is just the way to send and pay invoices. Focus on your work, not your paperwork, with FreshBooks.com. They get, I mean, it's wonderful. Uh, I'll give you a little tour here if you go to the FreshBooks.com website. Um, the invoice creation is very simple. They email invoices. They will print out an invoice, stamp it, and mail it as well for an additional fee. But what I love is they integrate payments into that email. And believe it or not, your clients do want to pay you. It's just as much of a pain in the butt for them as making the invoice was in the first place. So if you make it easy for them, they pay you faster. And they literally, you, you will speed up the time it takes to get paid. If they don't pay you, they've got hassle-free invoice follow-up. 90, 30, 90, 60 days, you set that up. Make sure that the client's reminded you owe me some money. Uh, it's very professional looking. You, If you do time and expenses, it's really easy. They have an app for the iPhone or there's a web app so you can just start and stop, start and stop. If you're an attorney or you bill out, do billable hours and then it automatically go, whoosh, goes right into the invoice. They do multiple currencies. This was great for me because I was, uh, I was working in Canada and the U.S. and so I could bill <laughs> in the appropriate currency. Uh, great for, in fact, this is, this is the kind of the stealth feature that we don't mention all. You can set up recurring invoices because, you know, your invoice is always the same over and over again. But you can also, if your client goes for it, set up recurring payments. So once you get that set up, it's just kind of like friction-free commerce. It's so awesome. I want you to try it right now. 30 days free. You get all the features of FreshBooks, everything, the multiple, uh, multiple uh, clients, multiple users, as many invoices as you want for 30 days absolutely free. All you have to do is go to freshbooks.com. If you're in business for yourself, if you're a small business, you want to get paid, this is the easy way to do it. you got to send those invoices. Oh, by the way, your, your accountant will love you at tax time because it's all collated and makes it very easy. Freshbooks.com. I don't think they ask, but if they do, just say you heard it on Twitter. I don't think they ask, but if they do, freshbooks.com. Yell at your computer. While you're it's Twin. I heard it on Twin. 
So uh, I think this has been fascinating. You know, I'm not normally into these uh, patent lawsuits. They just seem interminable. They go on and on and on. <laughs> but occasionally we'll get a judge like in the Oracle Google lawsuit who's just a character. <laughs> Uh, or you'll get some very interesting revelations, and that's what we're getting this week in the Samsung Apple uh, lawsuit. Um, Nothing says party like a company that is unbelievably secret and vindictive towards reporters having to give all the information <laughs> in public. Uh -huh. Woo! Well, and Apple did go to the judge and say, hey, look, we do not want to give out sales numbers. You know, they give out kind of uh, overall sales numbers at their quarterly uh, analyst reports, but they said, we don't, we're not going to. And the judge, I think, agreed to that. Uh, the judge was mad, a little bit mad, uh, at uh, the Samsung lawyers because she told Samsung, uh, you cannot introduce into evidence the f the, your ideas that the iPhone was copied from Sony. We're, we're not going to let you introduce it. <laughs> so the lawyers apparently, I guess, just went to the press and said, well, just in case. And, sh and, and Judge Coe literally uh, polled each juror individually. Did you see these stories in the press uh, this is one of them from The Verge. Is that about the the Joni phone? The Johnny phone, yeah. You call it the Joni? Yeah, jo like, she loves Chachi. <laughs> <laughs> um, that this was not stolen. This was not. You guys at All Things D actually had uh, had some of these uh, uh, interesting uh, prototypes. Ina Fried has really done a great job uh, covering this yeah, case. Yeah, she has. Yeah. Yeah, um, she's great. Uh, those are those, those did incredible. I mean, it's it's interesting. I always am fascinated by what gets a lot of traffic, and this was went they went crazy on this one. Well, on it's Apple, we and people are very interested. Also, some of yeah. the tidbits, now like the I fact. I tell you, Marissa Mayer is is keeping up with Apple in terms of interest <laughs> by readers. There you go. You're you're on top of the big stories. Yeah. No. Well, just I mean, it's it's odd what's interesting to people. But anyway, <laughs> I, you know, it is odd, and it, I guess it's predictable, but. Uh, Hey. Sort of, sometimes. I think sometimes some stories are more important and they don't get enough attention. Well, that I agree just, with. This one did. This one did. This one it was interesting, and she did a great job putting a slideshow together, which is people want to see. And the fact that some of this stuff was done at around a kitchen table, I found right. fascinating. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it was a good use of a slideshow. There's no cats or, or <laughs> lesbians kissing, and we managed to get traffic. You know, so I yeah. have to say, I was watching an Olympic slideshow. I, don't, I was kind of curious. I just want to see some pictures because I had missed most of the beach volleyball on TV. Oh, okay. So I, <laughs> I found somewhere a slideshow of beach volleyball. Very nice images. But yeah. uh, every fourth or fifth image, they would put an ad up. Yeah. Mm. For a testosterone supplement. Wow. <laughs> and I just thought, you know, this is annoying. Wow. Yeah. It's, and then well, and then to reach the right audience. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> apparently they knew who they were talking to. I don't know how they knew that. And I, then I, we're not a big we're not a big slideshow doer, but this case it worked out fine. Well, it's yeah, cuz it's cuz uh, you know, you're watching and you know that they're, they're billing the advertiser for each time that ad flashes up even though I'm pressing yeah. quit as quick as I can to go to the next picture of Missy right. May Trainer. Uh <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, I don't like slideshows. I think that's kind of a cheap thing that a lot of blogs do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to to build page views, but this was this was quite interesting. So what else did we learn? Are you do you pay attention to this Ed Bot? Or, I mean, uh, I, I do. In fact, one of the things that I thought was really interesting, one of the revelations that came out from that trial was that. Steve Jobs had been publicly saying, seven-inch tablet is stupid, stupid, stupid. No, it, you can't do anything on it. You, it's, uh, and, and very, very publicly saying this. And then there was an email that was introduced into evidence from Eddie Q at yeah. Apple, uh, uh, linking to an article from GigaOM by Kevin Toffel, who had said, you know, I think that I've been playing with this Samsung 7-inch tablet, and it's really awesome. And Eddie Q said, I agree with this. It's really good for reading, for Facebook, for mail. Not so good for web browsing, but there's a strong case to be made for this. And I talked to Steve. This was from February of 2011. And he said, I talked to Steve about this around Thanksgiving, and he agreed <laughs> with that. So here, here you have, <laughs> under oh! oath... <laughs> You're kidding. I mean, he did it at D every year. I mean, he'd say, I'm never going to get into phones, and then they'd be right. introducing the iPhone yeah. the next year. And uh, yeah. one year, finally, I said, what are you not doing this year? <laughs> really good to know. But he did that all the time. That was, like, classic. But that was kind shows. of a, a big one because he called, he appeared on an analyst call, which he rarely did, in uh, 2010, and kind of went off. The seven inch is a terrible idea. It's half the screen real estate of the iPad. It's a terrible idea. That's well, he knew he was serious about it. 
Yeah, yeah, maybe their their you, seven you, inches were terrible, not his. Seven not inches. his. Yeah. And by the way, it was seven point four six seven, whatever. You know what I mean? It wasn't. I think it's a slightly. It's different almost eight. Seven. It's seven point eight five. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Like right. Yeah. So. Well, well, the rumors. No one knows. It's but, bigger. But it's this bigger. does. You're right, Ed. But this does kind of make one think that this hmm. is probably going to be announced in the in September, as I some had speculated. Absolutely. I think. Absolutely. I don't know what Eddie Q sounds like. I don't remember. <laughs> But it seems like you should talk like this. <laughs> does it? Hey, I'm Eddie Q. I'm talking here. Oh, oh, hey. oh, I believe. Oh, oh Eddie Q. I believe here. there will be on? a seven inch market and we should do one, said Eddie Q. I tend to agree. So, <laughs> what are you out of your head? Of course. <laughs> Whoa, oh. I like that. Whoa, having used the Samsung Galaxy, I tend to agree. <laughs> so anyway, that could that does make me believe that they are going to do the seven inch. We're seeing, by the way, a, da a date now. You guys are really good, Kara, at getting the dates for the Apple things. Yes, do, we are. Do you have a date? <laughs> uh, I think someone else did. I, I don't know if we've confirmed it. I, for I the announcement or the release, September twelfth for the announcement. Yeah, yeah. October twenty um, fifth for shipping. Question yeah, mark? but that, but the, again, these are rumors. I, I, was it I more? Somebody got this uh, story. Yeah, I think yeah. it was Renee I, I Ritchie. I don't know what John has written re recently, but um, I was away, so I wasn't paying. See, I don't do actual much. reporting. What I do. You know, I need two sources, so I call you guys and somebody else. Uh, I don't know. I'll find out. I'll find. We will have the right there. But if that that is the one, I think John also yeah. said was Renee case, Renee Ritchie sure. and uh, and I more and Renee's been. We've had Renee on the show many times. Yeah. He's good. He's a good guy. Uh, it's he that said week. It's definitely that week for sure. September twelfth, and he said this is yeah. from a source who's been right before. This is what everybody always says. Right. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is the week we're having our All Things D annual. Uh, barbecue that week so i'm, I'm oh, hoping well, it, it has to be then <laughs> i'm having everybody come in it has so, to be september we'll 12th iphone 5 september 21st and if they do what is kind of being called the ipad mini uh perhaps it'll be announced at the same time uh their source is not saying that although it might be confusing if you look at the uh, article it kind of implies that it is but their source is not saying that so. Um, I don't know if they're going to call it. I mean, it was oh, interesting because Tim, Tim, Tim Cook talked about naming at D this year when we interviewed him at yes, the I love D10. That. Yeah. Um, and he, I, they may not give it a name. They may just, right. like, they don't, they don't, may not give it a fancy name. You can't call it the call iPad it the Mini because then people call the big iPad the iPad Maxi. And the, it, the, uh, yeah. it's not yes, a good thing. Yes, yeah. Then it gets into, mm, yeah. we yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't No go, joke too long. Don't go there. It gets into lady jokes. Lady jokes. I don't know. I'm not sure what they're going to call it, but it may not be any, it may not have a special name. So. Did Tim explain why they're doing that? Because I thought that was very strange that the, the new iPad has no name. I it's just, a, I think they decided not to play that game, I guess. I don't know. So there'll know. be the new iPhone? It's the new iPhone, the latest iPhone. How okay. do you distinguish a 7-inch new iPad from a 10-inch new iPad? The next iPad. Those will iPad. have to I be. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a marketing Well, I mean, like, they, they don't, they don't have, it's not like the MacBook Air 12. You know, right. I have to say, uh, as somebody who speaks about these products all the time to normal people on the radio, Normies. I need a name. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you can make one up for yourself. I do. I call it the iPad 3 because they don't, they don't otherwise. What is they're the iPad? They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. I don't, they, well, he said it as much as he said I know. I know. I read it. I read uh, Why well, so. make it simpler for consumers? I mean, I don't know. It's It's peculiar. Well, yeah, but, I mean, this, me, this is going to be a me? different product, right? Like, I mean, or or at least a derivation of, of well, the iPod or or the iPad, right? This seven-inch creation that we well, all hope to, to play with. What Kara just said, like, obviously, maybe, maybe you could. Go I was, ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, well, obviously, like, I'm not a marketing genius because they they had the biggest like what 20 million iPad sales right. last quarter without having a yes. distinctive name. So people walk in, Only they, they want a new iPad. Signs of life. <laughs> it could exactly. be like it could be like Starbucks. I'll take the Grande. I'll take the. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah, make up one. Italian words for it. I, I, have these, I when I go to the Starbucks, iPad I refuse venti. to use their venti. You know, yeah. I refuse to use their. I just say, give me the little one. You're such a give rebel. Me the little one, give me. Oh yeah, I know, no, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm right with you, Kara. I will say, I'll, 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 I want a large coffee, and they'll look at me right, like you're is, not using the word. The small words. does not have a small word. What's it's tall. The, the small is tall. Tall. I don't like that. It disturbs me. So I'm just so, saying, we'll have it. I'll have an iPad tall. That's what. You know what's you know what's really bad. Is when you go into a normal coffee shop and I'll say I have a venti latte, then they really give you the stink. They punch eye. you right in the nose. Yeah, we the don't. We're not Starbucks, me, sir. You might want to go down. Give me the big this, iPad. Give me the little iPad. The big pad. I'll take the big pad. I'll take the little pad. <laughs> I'm no. sure consumers won't have a problem with it. We no, just they'll us. know. They'll know. 
It's just hard. It's not hard for consumers. It's hard for people who talk about this stuff. Right. Don't you've always you have to, to parenthetically, store, Ed, go, comma, by which I mean the one released this. Well, for, I'm not for those concerned. of us who cover Microsoft I, I, I for a living, we, we hit that problem yeah. this week with the whole Metro. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. That, you know, so Microsoft tell us what did. happened, Ed. That was bizarre. But, uh, yeah, bizarre and... and, and uh, I, I want to choose my words carefully on this one. Don't. I drop bombs, my Ed. <laughs> my understanding is that uh, Metro AG... Uh, a German company that I guess runs ah runs grocery stores and also stores that sell technology. So they're kind of like a maybe a Costco or a Walmart thing where they have both food and stuff. Uh, and and they lodged a copyright complaint against Microsoft. Now the interesting thing is that Metro Apps is not it does not appear anywhere in mm -hmm. Windows 8. Microsoft but says it's a code name. Yeah, right. They in, in 2009 <laughs> it was a code name. In 2010, 11, and 12, it was a product name. And in fact, it's in it's in developer agreements today. If you sign a developer agreement to build an app for Windows 8 today, the agreement says, "And your Metro style apps right. will have the following features, and they will be priced such and such." And so, Metro style app has been the official name of of the the the, the part of Windows 8 that describes these new featured apps that use the WinRT API. And so now all of a sudden, boom, with no notice, Microsoft uh, began telling developers and partners and its own employees, do not use the word Metro at all, period. <laughs> Stop. Stop using it. And so last week when uh, Mary Jo Foley and uh, I think Tom Warren and a couple other people uh, found out about this, wrote stories about it, Microsoft responded to it with this boilerplate that says, this is a code name, and we often use code names when we're in development. And as we go forward, we're going to use the commercial names, which is just complete crap. No, they have ads. It says, look, here it is. Develop a great mm, style app. <laughs> Should we call it the technology formerly known as Metro? <laughs> Do we give it a little I, glyph? I did that graphic myself and did the little copy edit mark on it, I guess. It, I like uh, it. Yeah. I like it, Ed. You uh, call it so a, a mess, and it is a mess. We're going to come out with a, a, a replacement name for it, um, but they've spent, since, since at least the build conference uh, when, when Microsoft unveiled Windows 8, September of 2011, they have been heavily invested in the messaging around Metro-style apps, and for them to throw away that investment in messaging is, it, it's just the... I, I don't know. Is that's just why you, you'd think they'd fight it. I was going to say, this just seems like a profound failure in, in, in trademark search. I mean, I looked up tra the Metro trademark on the U.S. Patent and Trademark uh, website. There are literally thousands. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, the way trademarks work, it's my understanding. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just a police officer. But the way I understand <laughs> these things, uh, y you have a trademark in a specific – you can have – Conflicting trademarks right. if you're in different categories. For instance, when I went to Twitter and I said, "Hey, dude, we're our, we're, I'm working here. This is called Twit," <laughs> and they said, "Well, no, but you have a trademark in uh, online entertainment uh, and and video, and we have a trademark in microblogging, and that's so that's two separate uh, trademarks." My lawyer agreed, and so Eva and I said, "Well, well, if you don't do television, I won't do uh, microblogging." Of course, I've done microblogging, and now they're going to do TV. So yeah, they're partnered with NBC <laughs> Universal. So yeah, I think. I say back we bring lawyer. back Hailstorm. That's what I want. Hailstorm. <laughs> Remember that? What's that? I love that. It was a brand that Microsoft had uh, around cloud, right, Ed? I don't. It, it was so yeah, long right. ago. It was, I was, it like, was the original Hailstorm became .net. Um, yeah. And they were going to use Hailstorm to describe every web service that existed. <laughs> right. In. Several that Midwesterners inside of Microsoft pointed out this does not have positive connotations in business in most the best, of the world. Best brand name ever. Hailstorm. Exactly. Especially Cold, violent, ag. Aggravating. <laughs> All right. Now we're talking. Destroying Windows crops, 8. cars, the Windows. size of golf balls. I'm talking big. <laughs> the people Eddie Q's back. Yeah. <laughs> that's how, that's how, that's how old Ed and I are. Thing. I have to tell you. Else. Well, you know, we have a great feature on Windows Weekly where Mary Jo Foley goes back through the past Microsoft code names. Oh, she'd know. It's yeah, so she'd... much fun. You know, the one for um, 
I'm trying to remember the one from MSN, the original one. I can't remember. Marvel? Marvel? Uh, well, Marvel. Marvel was the service and Blackbird was the client. Wow. Yeah, yeah Mar Marvel yeah. was one of, one of the MSN names for sure. So Microsoft has a long, happy history of making up code names that it doesn't use. Long, you know, there were a lot of them. But it does seem as if they had thought they could use Metro. Why they didn't fight this? It's, this isn't it, it. What did you say? It's a cafe, Ed. The only the thing store. that I, no, it's a no, it's a it's a, a very large uh, retail outlet. And the only that's thing that's not I could a think conflict. Of, I, I, it's, I an it's an I online one, I that, think. Is that the right? only thing that, that I can correct? think of is you know Microsoft has been involved in uh, patent litigation. Yeah. Uh, around the Xbox uh, and and uh, in in Germany and and they've also been involved in a lot of antitrust stuff in the EU and I I can just imagine Steve Ballmer throwing a chair and saying I do not want to pay another goddamn dollar to another goddamn German lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> it's Danish, not German. Uh, Metro.dk well, or maybe this is a different one. Uh, Metro Metro AG, uh, you, yeah, you oh, just be, they're they're all over the e, they're okay. all over the EU. And yeah. Well, and German that actually company. is relevant because you don't want to be Germany is notoriously kind of non uh, anti -co corporation. Exactly, so you could lose in court in Germany just because you're Microsoft. And Microsoft has lost a, a number of very high profile, very high priced legal cases in the EU, and so they might have said, you know. Uh, but I don't know. They're not talking about it. And the public statement that they made was so transparently untrue. Right. <laughs> I think they could I think they could actually have won some sympathy if they had told a, at least a, a, a redacted version of the truth here and said, you know, somebody has has confronted us with a uh, trademark allegation here and we don't think it's. Uh, it, it's warranted, but our, you know, given our history in the EU, we don't feel that it's worth it to, you know, potentially risk delaying this product and throwing it to a situation. That's the statement that they should have made, and why they came out with this nonsense statement that they did <laughs> beyond me. And nobody will talk to they, uh, Microsoft, and their PR people have basically gone dark hmm. on this. <laughs> No, it's just how Microsoft's been running itself lately. It's a very strange company. I, I think Microsoft's a code name. Uh, eventually, they'll, they'll release the commercial name for the company. <laughs> it's the fifth largest retailer in the world, according to revenues. Hmm. So it isn't, it isn't an insignificant trademark. And they have been involved in some high-profile uh, litigation as okay. well over, right. over their trademarks. Uh, and, and so, but if they won't talk to anyone about it, uh, they, and now this could also be a bluff. Uh, this could also be a negotiating tactic, where uh, where they you know it, maybe Metro wanted some money for a for a settlement of this thing, but the money that they asked for was too much. I don't know. You know, we could speculate. It, it would be irresponsible not to speculate. <laughs> <laughs> That's our job, and we're doing it well. I must say. Uh, what else did we, to get back to the original topic, what else did we learn about Apple uh, this week? We learned that they do uh, consumer testing and surveys, mm -hmm. which surprised me. I thought they just did everything in a vacuum. No. Apparently no. not. It's like, what do you think? It's like Willy Wonka? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's I what mean, Steve serious. Jobs wanted us to think. They, they, they just go yes, on vision quests. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're a real live company. They have, uh, I don't know if they have free food in their cafeteria or not, but uh, I don't think they do. I I'm think you sure. pay. I, I paid. I think they always pay. make me pay. I paid. Yeah. I paid. Them. Yeah. Anyway, I just, they, of course they do these things. They have to understand, you know, on right. some level. I think they do a lot out of instinct and what they think is good around their design concepts, but they certainly have to do regular testing and it makes sense. Why wouldn't they? Apple announced yeah. that uh, 3 million downloads of OS X Mountain Lion, which came out last week in four days, they say it's the most successful OS X release in their history. Hmm. It's cheap. It's 20 bucks. Uh, Apple has never put copy protection on their operating systems. They've never really paid any attention to where you start installing it. They make hardware. They don't, they, don't, they don't need to. They make the hardware. If it, they're, you know, if, I mean, aside from the Hackintosh market, which is one one thousandth of one percent, right. they they already know that you paid them on average fifteen hundred dollars for the hardware. So they're basically, you know, the twenty bucks is, they, you know, that's in fact. Pain. Why charge? Why charge at all? I guess because you can. Especially versus the 
uh, the other side of it, which is they want as many people with the newest operating system so developers can develop super cool things right. that make people want to buy Mac. You know, one thing that uh, that we also learned in the trial last week, uh, Apple has spent $1 billion on marketing the iPhone and the iPad. Well, I did. I saw those numbers. Those were very interesting. Yeah, that's... More uh, on the iPhone than the iPad, but the iPhone's had a longer time. Right, that's been five years versus right. uh, Three, two years. Or two, yeah. yeah. Yeah, only two, believe it or not. Seemed to be doing something right. <laughs> 400, what was it, 473 million on the uh, on the iPad? I think that's what the number was. It was and, uh, yeah, a and huge amount of 500, money. 500, yeah. yeah. Well, and, uh, and you've seen a few Apple ads on the Olympics uh, last, uh, well, this week. Not very good ads. <laughs> but we, I mean, what do you think of the nervous genius? I, I still, uh, I, I gave up after. It was like a sitcom. It was like a bad acting. Bad no, sitcom. I just, I just gave up on. I, we the don't Olympics. have cable, uh, oh. and I, after restarting the stream seventeen times uh, during the road race last weekend, I kind of gave up on the Olympics for a while. You don't. I have... expected to see Jerry Seinfeld and Bill Gates walk. Yes. Where's the churro? <laughs> Where's the churro? I ask you. That was Corinthian leather. Right? I'd forgotten about that commercial. That was how do you even it was describe a series that? Of them. Wasn't it? Wasn't well, it yeah, but there was really there were two. Two, and then they decided this is not a good idea. The last one ended with Bill and Jerry going off in the sunset. Jerry says, "Let's go get a churro," and then there was something about Bill shaking his butt. Uh, yeah, a little butt wiggle. He <laughs> said, "Like but Jerry said, well, give give me a sign," and and Bill went like, this. "Yeah, he, yeah, something like that." That was just. Bad. It was like, it was like a David Lynch movie. It was just weird. Like I, just, I didn't <laughs> know what was bad. happening. I, I had no clue. You know, if Bill Gates had brought out a little oxygen mask. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Apple ads. I'm the only person who likes the new ones. The Genius ones. Yeah, he's adorable. He's cute. I thought he was cute. Oh, you like the Genius? You know, that's I like Ferris him. He's Bueller. He's cute. It's cute. Yeah. They, were, they were like human. I mean, usually Apple ads are so cool, and they weren't. Right. They were not. They weren't cool, and I like that. They, were, they weren't I them cool. They, they were adorable. I called them adorable. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess, I mean, the, it is him. an interesting, you know, it is, no matter what it is, it is a change of tact, right? That it's yeah. not the cool, austere, minimalist, here are features that you can use in daily life uh, kind question of The question is, who are they aimed at? Walmart regular, shoppers. I, people love that gene. My mom. Shoppers, yeah. Now, I, my, my mom and my stepdad are, they go every Saturday like it was a recreational hobby to the Apple Store to take training lessons for their, the uh, their, right. they love their the iPhone, geniuses. their iPhone and uh, their new MacBooks, and they go every time. They learn something, they love it, they enjoy it, they enjoy that experience, which is somewhat unique to Apple. You know, it, it is part of their identity. Not if Microsoft, Sony, and Samsung can have, help it, all three of them have created stores. Like duplicates, but, 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 but nothing we, but we nearly don't identify, as successful. Yeah, we don't identify. Know, those, don't, those, see, it's not easy to people. do, I guess. I, I, he reminded me of a lot of Apple genius stuff. I, I thought that he, I don't know, I liked it. Young, it underpaid. <laughs> well, that's another story. Expert. But they, they, some of them, I, I ran into one. I put up a, someone had a, ta one of the genies had a tattoo of Apple on their arm. I said, you're oh, going yeah. a little too far. Oh, no. Look um, at this guy sleeps in his Apple shirt. He's got his, he wears his Apple badge to the <laughs> door. Look how That's cute he adorkable. is. My kids like that someday. Is he cute? He's adorable. <laughs> He's a nice boy. He's a nice, <laughs> nice I, boy. I want my kids to be like nice and helpful like this. This is nice. He's a nice boy. He's a nice what, boy. <laughs> one of the things I've learned through the years is do not underestimate uh, Apple. Uh, when they do something yeah. that seems uh, odd or off kilter, um, you know, you, you go back and read all the people who panned the original iPad right. as a as a uh, as an oversized iPhone and said right. it wouldn't work. You know, it makes really interesting <laughs> reading to go back and look at those yeah. 2010 reviews and it you can go back and look at the you know so that just from the product uh, point of view but also from the advertising point of view. I'm also sure that they've done uh, plenty of research and maybe even some focus groups uh, to get these ads I'm sure. Uh, yeah, properly calibrated. I think the qu the question is that they're not avant-garde you know, this, it, it, goes, it goes from uh, a style not, of... They're not for the crazy ones. Yeah, I mean, it goes from a style of ads that you would imagine Don Draper pitching to yeah. an, a style of ad that you would imagine Don Draper rejecting. Exactly. And I'm not saying that... Those were Draper rejects. That, uh, yeah, that, that Peggy would come in there and he would just coolly yeah. look at her and dismiss her from the <laughs> office if she brought up the, the Apple Genius thing. So I, 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 think that I think they're fine. I just think that yeah. they're not aimed... They're aimed at a different 
uh, a different set of humanity, and I think it is a set of humanity that watches the Olympics. You have you have just right. a, a wide variety of people that are watching these games, and that's who they're trying to talk to. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk when we come back. Uh, apparently, uh, Henry Blodgett doesn't share your respect for Apple, uh, Ed Bot. He says the iPhone 5 is going to be a disaster. Oh, wait a minute. Let's get this one here real quickly. <laughs> oh, no. This is an Apple. This is a Microsoft ad. I don't think this ad ever aired. How much do you think this advanced <laughs> operating environment is worth? Wait just one minute before you answer. Watch as Windows integrates Lotus 1, 2, 3 with Miami Vice. Now we can take this Ferrari and paste it right into Windows right. Now how much do you think Microsoft Windows is worth? Don't answer. Wait until you see Windows right and Windows Paint and to listen to what else you Steve Ballmer in a very ill-fitting suit and uh, it looks like Windows 1.0. Actually, I don't know what version of Windows. That, that, was a, that was one of the ads right? they do for their sales right. conference, sales, their annual sales, sales conference. conference. Yeah. Right. There's yeah. so many great ads, and I w somewhere I wish there were an archive. The CES ads too that they used to remember the one with Bill Gates yeah, and Steve Ballmer driving a Volkswagen. Da mm -hmm. da da da, and they see <laughs> an old Sun micro server sitting yeah. by the road, and they throw it in the back seat, and it starts to smell. And <laughs> They, they, they did a good. They did a sofa. good one for D one year with um, the guy from Napoleon Dynamite. Dynamite. Oh wow! Like yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's good stuff. I like that stuff. Then, unfortunately, because of rights issues, uh, most of that stuff never surfaces. Never sees the yeah, light of day. Yeah, unfortunately, we had a wonderful one from Kodak that is. I wish we could use. We don't have the rights to. Right. It, but it's wonderful. Exactly. We'll take a break. We'll come back uh, in just a bit. Talk about the iPhone five. There's lots. This is. There's a ton of news this week. We'll get to it all. I promise you. Uh, the the uh, Olympics and Twitter and NBC uh, and uh, oh, there's more. The new dig, we'll talk. The new cloud player from Amazon. But first, let me take you on a little visit to something. I I, I want to do a Steve Martin here and say the new Squarespace is here. The new Squarespace is here. The new Squarespace is here. Very exciting. Squarespace six has launched. Now you know we talk about Squarespace all the time. The simply put, the best hosting for your site ever. Fantastic. But now, now it's even better because the new Squarespace content management system has launched, Squarespace 6, that just makes it, it's very modern. The templates are gorgeous. They're using, they're doing something now called responsive design, which we spent on our new site over $100,000 to do. Uh, you can get this for, you know, $8 a month. <laughs> um, so the idea of responsive design, and, and it makes sense in this world where everybody's mobile, is that your page looks the same no matter what the device is. It responds, it resizes appropriately. So that's why, for instance, when you drag an image to Squarespace, it generates seven different sizes, one for every appropriate device. So it looks great. Your site will look great on everything from a 27-inch screen to a 3.5-inch iPhone. The the ability to drag and drop and design. I know you guys on NSFW use. You, oh, I yeah. love this. Use you, you let one shot Squarespace sites all the time. Yeah, well, because Squarespace uh, offers so fun. Uh, you know the free. You get uh, two weeks free with free no trial. credit card or anything. Yeah, uh, yeah. So on our show, we have people make you know funny websites all the time, I love and it. really, I think you know Squarespace. We've talked to them, and, and they love. They don't mind. Yeah, well, because they love people getting to use uh, exactly. the tools. So when they know that they want to go and have a serious project, that they want to use this product, they know how to use it. They're they're familiar with everything that they can do. And let me tell you this: that responsive design stuff. Uh, this it's is only cool. like maybe two years ago. My friends at uh, Upstatement, which is a fantastic. Uh, design firm out in Boston, uh, very good friends of mine, just did uh, the Boston Globe redesign that introduced that idea. Oh, uh, really? Is that the, where that came from? Yeah, and, and now this is available Everybody on a consumer it. level, yeah. and, and that's insane. That's oh, great. Because that, that, it's that hard. Is, that, that is, it's, it's extraordinarily hard, yeah. and uh, it is it is so well done on the new Squarespace. What's nice, no, no two Squarespace sites look alike. You can't tell it's a Squarespace site. They, you no. have the 300-plus Google type fonts, the the really easy customization. But also, uh, if you know CSS, you can you know they've got a pop-out CSS editor with mm -hmm. co uh, the code coloring and all that stuff. So it's really, this is an entirely new project com product, completely rewritten, brand new code base, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript Foundations, this is the best. And it's hosting plus the software, so you're going to get an incredible site. And the best part is the pricing. So let me exit out of this uh, this video. And by the way, workshops.squarespace.com, they've got training free for you, so you can take webinars and, and learn how to use this. 
But if you go to squarespace.com right now, uh, you can sign up for a free account, two weeks free, do everything, all the features, import your, import your blog from WordPress, TypePad or Blogger and all that. But then if you decide you like it, the pricing is phenomenal. And I don't know how they're doing this. They have yearly plans. They have month-to-month -month plans. The best deal, of course, is the yearly plan. In fact, it's an extra special good deal if you use the offer code TWIT8, T-W-I-T-8, for the month of August, the eighth month, TWIT8, because we'll give you 10% off your first purchase. So if you buy a yearly plan, that's 10% off for the whole year. And look at these prices. The basic plan, $8 a month. But the the deal really here to me is $16 a month. You get unlimited pages, galleries, and blogs, unlimited bandwidth, unlimited storage, unlimited contributors. It is a pro site for $16 a month. And then apply the Twit8 offer code, and you can take 10% off of that. They'll also hook you up uh, automatically with your custom domain so you can have that domain name that goes that, you know, you pick. They'll register it for you. They'll hook it up and make it all to, all at no charge. Squarespace.com. The new Squarespace is here, and you've got to try this. You've got to try this. Squarespace.com. If you decide to buy, just do me a favor. Use the offer code TWIT8, and you'll save 10%. Love it. Facebook stock down to under 20 bucks now. Mm. Huh. Mm. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> is that the right price, or are they, are they a deal? It's the, probably the right price. Because it's the price. That's the price. <laughs> I mean, well, it is the right price for now. But I'm just wondering if the if there's an upside to uh, buying a Facebook. I'm look. I don't buy tech um, stock, and I can't, so I don't know, and I look, don't care. If you look at uh, PE multiples, it's actually still pricey. But you Amazon I mean? is too. It, yeah, they all are. I'm not Apple and Google. They're very quick. I think they're ten. But they're old companies. They've been around a long time. Yeah, they're doing rather well, aren't they? Um, yeah, true. I think that um, the two of them are really strong companies now in terms of profits and revenues uh you know uh, if you're looking at it as a growth stock it's not very good price if you're looking at it as maybe there's some problems it's perfectly priced uh, you know i think we'll see i think they've got to start showing some real um growth in their revenue like heavy growth that's and and uh, users is harder because they've sort of reached almost as many users as they can get to probably well and we've uh, seen some revelations in their uh, 10k they said 83 million of their accounts are bogus Hmm. They're yeah, spam nice. or duplicates or mistakes. And that seems, that seems actually low to yeah, me. That, that, that actually seem seems low. pretty good. That's only like 10%. 8.7%. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, like I, yeah. yeah. I like that you use revelations. Revelations. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not such a revelation, especially if you were in the know, but they also said uh, our ad sales are softening. We're down again. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I found. I actually had a very positive ad experience on Facebook the other day. I, I found. Did you buy an really ad liked. for the Diamond Club? For the Diamond Club? No, no, we have not. We have not <laughs> bought any. No ads. ads. ads you haven't bought all. any ads. Well, number one, I, I, I'm not. I mean, Patricia Harkins Bradley is the writer of the. I'm Diamond sorry, Club. I keep uh, conflating you know, I, the two I'm just of you. A fan, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I'll say so. I bought this poster. It was like a spark art poster or something of their, yeah. they did a screening of Blazing Saddles. I love Blazing Saddles. So I bought their like specialty it, thing. And then the next day, literally my entire timeline was spark art posts. Wow. It was like, it went from <laughs> me being like, you gave hey, them a signal. That was, that was great. I, I had a great buying experience. Thanks to Facebook. Cheers to you guys. You guys are awesome. To the next day being like, you could not have ruined this in any more profound <laughs> wow. way. Oh dear. It was probably just automated too. Yeah. You know, I get gay cruises. I'm not even going to click on any of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's weird. I get gay cruises. Maybe it's the well, police outfit. Well, let's go. Let's, you and I go. That would be fun. I'm a macho, there macho we go. man. That'd be I one hell of a gay cruise. I would to go on a gay cruise with you, Leo. Why? <laughs> Why? Why? What would be I fun about you, that? You would be a lot of fun on a gay cruise. You just would. What is a gay cruise? Have you been on a gay cruise? I have. I what have. is a gay cruise like? Well, I went on a lesbian one once, and it was... I'd like to go on a lesbian cruise. A bunch of gay people on a boat. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the like, lesbians are different than the gay men. <laughs> they're different. I, I've never been on a gay man cruise. I don't know. Yeah. Well, okay. Let's you can go. dare to dream. Dare to dream. So I know, I'm looking... I would, with you, I would do it. It would be fun. All right. Deal. I don't know how you can explain that to Megan, but okay. Oh, no, she'll be fine, believe me. <laughs> now, if you could, now if you could arrange to do a Twit broadcast from the cruise. Oh my God, that would be fantastic. I'll do that. that we've done Twit be, on a cruise. No, we've that would done, be fabulous. We've done Twit on cruises <laughs> before. 
We have big it's fun. users of technology, big early users. I had a, a chapter in one of my in my first book about AOL. It was the gay community it was integral oh, to huge. the growth of AOL. Oh, it's about, huge. It, 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 uh, it was really important. Very early adopters. Well very, educated. Heavy, heavy users of yes, heavy users. Disposable of income. It's everything you dream of and more. Diamond Club. Early innovations around. Yeah. Diamond Club. <laughs> Diamond Club. <laughs> yes. I don't know. There may be some uh, some um, stuff going on here, but uh, I'm liking this okay. Diamond Club. All right. So, so this is, uh, yeah. I, let me just show you a little bit. I'll go to my books because I, of course, have a copy. Uh, Patricia Harkins Bradley, she tweeted me. I was really, I, I have to say. I was <laughs> Starstruck, right? Starstruck. Oh, I can't, you know, this is a flaw, by the way, in iBooks. I cannot open this on a desktop. I have to go do it on a mobile device. I have it. I download it. But yeah. I have to sync it with an iPhone or an iPad to read the book. Well, yeah. It well, goes wirelessly, right? Through iCloud. Well, I don't I, care. I have it on my computer. Yes. I want to read you it. You just double click it. When you have a craving it. for Diamond Club, it needs to be satisfied. <laughs> it needs to be sated post haste. So what's the story with this? Okay. This is, uh, this is a... Uh, when, well, I'll read the description. When Brianna Young discovers that Roman Dial... <laughs> The man she built a relationship and a multi-million dollar company with has gotten married to another woman. He texts her. Uh, no, she finds she out. She finds out on the social network that they both built fullydateable.com. Wait a minute. Here's, a, here's uh, a. Thank you. Apparently, our entire staff has purchased this book. <laughs> um, They're not alone. Yeah. No, and it's a great. Well, no. How many do you do you have sales figures? I have. I have. I have numbers for you. All right. Do catch people up. On, on what exactly this is about? No 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 oh, no 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 no. no, no, no not we don't yet. want to. Okay. Not until we've really teased the hell out of them. <laughs> okay. So here, if you look, this is the book on an iPad, where really it is better for one-handed reading. <laughs> here is uh, here yeah, is that's um, Patricia. That's Patricia Patty. Harkins Bradley. Now she's a little shy because there's she's a shy to, lady. She's hiding behind a, a bush or something there. I think it's a tree. She's a uh, English teacher and ex-wife, mother of three in San Francisco. But I have to say, when you read the first few pages, and I wish they had a sample. Do they have a sample? Yeah, they have a sample, yeah. You can get a Because sample. you should really, you yeah, bastard. I would have sworn the person next to me said the words, but they came from my mouth, my body, my soul. My right hand that dropped the cup of overpriced coffee, probably a tall, maybe a venti. Maybe a venti, yeah. On my well-worn Converse sneakers, my left hand dropped my iPhone on the concrete, sending it dancing down the street. My iPhone, that's where I read it. Just a few simple words that changed my life forever. One simple push oh message <laughs> that sounded the custom chime of my fully dateable app. Roman Dial is now married to Bonnie wow. Barrow. Married, not engaged. Married. Wait a minute, the best is line like, in here. Is, is this like Fifty Shades of Grey for geeks? <laughs> exactly! <laughs> yes. And by the way, number five, it was number four, but... It, Today, yeah, just just a couple hours ago, it dropped from number four to number five. Um, on the on the iBook store, I mean, of all books, uh, which is yeah. kind of wow. sad because so, it was dominating. There's a big market. There was, there's a big market for this. This is so Don't. much better. I don't know if you read Fifty Shades of Grey. I did. No, you know, I didn't. I, I'm like one of the last people. This is people so in. much better. Uh, listen, listen, listen to this line. <laughs> Where is it? Where's well, the one want, yeah, about the friend to... accepting his friend? Yeah, no, here we go. It's. Uh... I can have it speak it. There we go. It's, it starts with Roman Dial's soft brown hair. Roman Dial's. Wait a minute. Let me just select the whole thing and let and let the iPad do what it does best. <laughs> let's oh, let's have the iPad read oh, this. Oh no. Wait a minute. Slow down. No, slow down. Do it again. <laughs> oh, all right, that's enough, and we're moving on. Brown hair bob back and forth in the golden rays of the San Francisco sun as I accepted his friend request between my alabaster thighs. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as sexy when the the iPad <laughs> says you. <laughs> it's better. It's better. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, all right, sales figures. Yeah. Um, we, I just want to let, uh, we, we are There's going... a reason, Kara, why we're talking about this. You'll yes. learn. I, I get it. Are you I... getting it already? You're getting it, I think. I got yeah. it a lot. I got it when I heard alabaster. You're, you're so smart. <laughs> you're so smart. You cannot fool you. <laughs> the hell has alabaster thighs? <laughs> People in romance I novels. I have, I have alabaster <laughs> thighs. You'd know that if you went on a gay cruise with me. <laughs> well, You'd have sun abused thighs in that yeah, case. Yeah, well, I like short shorts. Alabaster. Uh, they would be alabaster if you went on a cruise. All right, do, we, do we want to explain it, or, or do you want me to say how, how what many? What are the sales figures? Okay. Uh, I can say that it's, it's in fact, over 9,000. Jeez uh, Louise. In, now, it's, it's 99 uh, cents, so it's a considerable deal compared to the 9.99 for yeah, 50 Shades yeah. of Grey. Uh, in fact, uh, as of yesterday, we're getting, uh, still, we haven't got the stuff for today, but it is over 12,000 copies that have been sold uh, since we put it up, 
Uh, now, where does the money Monday. go? Because I know it doesn't go to Patricia Harkins Bradley. Well, yeah. Can I explain, explain what this is? All right. So here's the deal. About a month and a half ago, uh, Brian Brushwood, my co-host on NSFW show, released Scam School Book 2 and uh, realized that the top 10 of the iBook store was a ton of super cheap uh, erotic fiction since Fifty Shades of Grey right. came out. <laughs> totally so, changed the publishing world. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, John Tilton had an idea, and it kind of matched with something that I had just read about, which I found <laughs> fascinating, which was back in 1969, Mike McGrady of the uh, Newsday, the, new, the paper Newsday, released a, or teamed with 18 other writers to each separately write a chapter of a uh, romance novel because those were really coming <laughs> Naked into Naked Came the Stranger. Naked Came the Stranger. That was the name of the book. It's and it a became huge hit. a huge thing in and of its own right. I remember this very well. I was uh, alive <laughs> well, at good. the time. It's good. <laughs> so we had, we had, we said, okay, so how do we update this? Number one, uh, users are the content creators. So instead of having the staff of a newspaper write it, we'll have our uh, listeners write it, our NSFW listeners write it. Uh, number two, the New York Times bestseller list are now lists like Amazon and, and iBooks, even though the New York Times bestseller list still exists. But for us... But what are they going to do? Check bookstores? Like people buy books at bookstores? Absolutely. And number three, that a secret isn't a secret anymore. I mean, they kept it a secret that uh, Pen Penelope Ash, their pseudonym, was... Uh, they didn't They didn't tell anybody. Yeah, until they revealed it in this big right. uh, you know, talk show kind of thing. We decided... We're just going to, uh, secrets are public. We can yell and scream about this all we want, and nobody will really know because no one will really care. Right. Uh, and so we eventually, we released this on Monday. This is all user created. All of our, our users wrote all these chapters. We basically created. Wait a minute, all the chapters. Well, you wrote, did you write the first one? Because I, I have to say, I may I or may detect, not have written the first one. I detect one. a little bit of your style. <laughs> I may or may not there. have written the line. Uh, alabaster thighs. Accepting a friend request yes. between alabaster thighs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh. Were, were you sober at the times? I, I you know. I'm telling you, Pulitzer Prize. I'm telling you. So basically, the the experiment is, and now that it's a, it's a success, we can take mm -hmm. this uh, from maybe Frank. the Booker the Booker Prize. Yes, yes, the Booker Prize. for erotic fiction. Uh, we can we can now take it from like the silly oh we ran a prank thing to the uh, insufferable uh, this is why it's art explanation. You got articles there. The Telegraph wrote about it. Yeah. it's been it, you're you're getting. Everybody's writing about this. This is a very interesting thing. Yeah, yeah. The Daily Dot uh, wrote about it. Yeah. And, uh, so the money goes to what? Okay. So here's the thing. We did not. We expected this. Like we've run a lot of these stupid. It's starting to be a lot of money. NSFW is my show. point. Uh, yeah. No. Absolutely. And so like when people asked us initially, like, oh, well, what are you gonna do with the money? It's like, what do we? What do you mean? We're gonna, what are we gonna do with five hundred dollars? We'll have we're a gonna, party. We're gonna we're gonna make some books for the people that yeah. that wrote it. Maybe get some T-shirts and and throw a party <laughs> for people that contributed and and want to come. Uh, so now you're since, talking Kickstarter money. It has since become significantly more yeah. than $500. Yeah. So uh, on the NSFW show this week, we're going to we're going to talk about it. We're going to figure it out. But it's gonna it's it's been incredibly humbling and amazing that people wanted to kind of get in on this this silly thing. And basically, the idea was, what would happen if you made a erotic fiction novel in a post Fifty Shades of Grey world that very specifically and stringently eliminated plot and character development? <laughs> and just added nothing but three scoops of sex. It's 31 pages. No. No. Okay. That's, that's a mistake. That's a mistake. There's an it's error on the Apple pages. site. Believe me, you get plenty of uh, excitement in yeah. this book. <laughs> I was gonna say like I was, I was that's why I was really curious. I'm like you, you've nine thousand sales of a thirty-one page document, so I feel better knowing it's people. Oh no, it's 200, pages. two hundred two two hundred and fifty pages, and I will say this: we have a lot of uh, sex. You know, uh, oh, geez, it's nothing but sex. <laughs> it is absolutely a hundred percent sex, 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 sex. Uh, do the except for the of friend requests, else. or is that a you metaphor? Know, <laughs> so, can I just? You know what's interesting here? Can I just say yes, what's interesting please. here is I've noticed I, I've just recently because of these iBooks and and reading of these things I found out a friend of mine who I had no idea read rom romance novels had hundreds of them on oh, yeah. the iBooks. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And this is something they don't want to read in public necessarily on a plane, but when they're on the iBooks or wherever whatever they're reading their Kindles, yep. they yep. they like to read them. So you'd you'll, you'll you'll see a lot more of this kind of. It just is a really interesting trend because you can sort of read what you e want to read. But I, I was shocked. This person had so many uh, romance novels. What? I had no idea this was an interest or whatever, but oh, how, yeah. like, you know, she heaves her breasts or whatever the names of those things are. There's the, it it's, was, it's insane. It's really There's like, interesting. It's, it, iBooks changes everything because you can actually enjoy these. Well, what it's done, it's done for erotic fiction, what the VCR right. did for porno, right? All right. You it's know, made well, it so of, that you can take it home. You know, although, 
was a story about people watching porn on their iPads recently. Uh, you know, like now people are bringing them into coffee shops or whatever. Yeah. Um, but this is different. This is reading because you don't. It really does hide. You could be reading it in public right. and people don't see what you you're don't reading. Have the, big... the porn stuff is a little more problematic. No, I'm just saying. But, but the VCR. You know, used to be, again, yeah, I'm old enough to remember this, you had to go to a, a, a movie a theater show. to watch porn. Right. Yeah. Okay, Fred sure. Willard. But but even 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 before the, the, the digital publishing break this in, you're still talking about a, a romance novels, the, the statistics, something like every 30 seconds, somebody buys a no a romance novel. Yeah. Uh, this is just off the supermarket shelves mm -hmm. and, 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 and bookstores and stuff. I mean, some of the bookstores. Imagine iBooks, they're going to be even bigger because yeah. then people who who sort of ferret them away because people this person was embarrassed to be reading them but wasn't because they were on it was really interesting right. They, right. they have an interest yep. in i knew all the writers and well super the romance writers of america they had this the industry's net revenue decreased from 10.27 billion in 2009 to 10.11 billion in 2010 huh but I mean, it's it's, it's going like, to go up. But there's the a problem is they're cheap. They're only you know they're less expensive. Well, you don't make as much. Well, money. and really that was the idea of of the Diamond Club was that once we kind of elevated into the top ten, wow. would we be uh, please pardon the pun sticky uh, and. <laughs> Just absolutely, uh, you know, be part of the reading list of people who just serially buy these books. And we've seen some backlash of people uh, that, uh, you know, are giving it one-star reviews that it, this is not what their kind of book is. They like more character development and, and plot in their romance novel. But compared to what we are selling it, and compared to what books like Fifty Shades of Grey get in one-star reviews, we're really not all that abnormal for other low cost, I think it's uh, e significantly better written, to be honest with you, than most of the stuff I've read. On. It, it is. It is Not actually that very read. funny. Like our our listeners are oh, okay. very, very, very funny. All I'm going to say is that there is a chapter that involves a a veteran of the Iraq War who lost his leg that had me. I was on a oh, flight dear. from Washington D.C. back to SFO this week that had me laughing so hard I embarrassed myself now, in front of the entire plane. Some, somebody told me there is a character in that book. Yeah. With a name somewhat like mine. <laughs> there is likely a, a character. Okay, I'm just checking. Your, yes. name, your name has a lot of possibilities, Leo. <laughs> oh, it does. Uh, well, I know that there is, of course, the, the main character is named Brianna Young, and right. she has a tryst with somebody named Justine Brushwood. <laughs> uh, there's, no, it's all littered with NSFW refer yeah. uh, references, but uh, it's been... Did you edit this in any way or, or vet it? Or you Sweet just, Lord, no. You I, just threw it all in, <laughs> so you haven't even read it. No, I read half of it. Okay, and that was after it came out. So you don't even know what's happening. No, we. I, I shared a very an experience with the rest of America this week, and I I got to read <laughs> the Diamond Club for the first time. So so from Mars Rover to porny novels, fantastic. Oh, we cover that's the, the we cover that's the what waterfront. Technology is all about. We that's cover the waterfront. No, I, I, absolutely. But uh, yeah, no, we. Uh, the the one cool thing that is going to be interesting for anybody who's into e publishing and wants to know more about this stuff is unlike a lot of authors or or publishers. We have literally no reason to keep any of this information secret. We want to get a, a week's worth out because we think that's going to be the best data set uh, to kind of uh, show what a hit ebook on the iBook store is. Right. Uh, but on the next NSFW show, we will, every red cent will be accounted for, every oh, copy. Oh, who cares? It's 99 cents. It. Come on. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't mean like, like where it's going to go, but just like what it sold. In you right. know what per day you know just right. I think people who are interested I'm in e-publishing you know I think will like that that data and you know the charts we know this from podcasts on uh, on iTunes are ballistic so they're they're very much about what happened most recently as opposed to right. yeah you know, so like, like like if let's say we just dropped to number five today from number four we were at number four all week uh, if everybody on Twit went and bought it now it would probably go back up to number four right Hint. this is podcast <laughs> this is uh, ebook ebook ebook, ebook only yeah. there's no print of this. No, yeah. no, no, no. I think we might we might do uh, something uh, for the the people that wrote it. We're probably going to do hardcovers for them, just so you know, as, as a thank you, uh, and and so they can they can have it, and maybe we'll treasure sell it them or something. Yeah, I don't know. Or if there's any publishers out there, you want to pick up the print rights, the Diamond Club, holler at your boy. <laughs> <laughs> I I actually know the guy who optioned uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. Dana Brunetti optioned that for uh, Focus Features, and uh, that's right. And uh, Dana's a great friend of the. Uh, maybe he'd be interested in an option of the Diamond Club. Talk to me. I'll talk to him. Talk to me. Here we go. I'll I'm tell sure you, you won't get what E.L. James got, but you know, no, you know. no, no. That's fine. You know, you can own Star Wars and Spaceballs. So. You know? uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
It's kind of apt, actually. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> So Henry Blodgett writing in Business Insider, pure link bait, but I loved it. Uh, if the <laughs> iPhone, if the iPhone really looks like this, Apple may be screwed. His point is that it isn't much of a change, it's and that not, really hurt iPhone 4S sales. Yeah, the iPhone 4S was even less of a change. I, 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 yeah, this is this is a pure link bait title. I Except mean, that the one thing that has changed is you've got the Galaxy S3. Samsung's right. announced it's going to have the Galaxy Note 2, an unbreakable 5.5 inch screen, available four days before the Apple announcement. I, I'll believe it's unbreakable after I use one for a month. I know. You, if anybody could break it, you will. I got to say, I mean, the, the Galaxy S3 is, is a gorgeous phone. I love it. But it is, it is big. That's big? You think that's big? Put it, well, I, I put phones in my pocket. The problem with the iPhone bigger. is he's small. <laughs> I mean, I think that this is... Now, the new iPhone is bigger, mm -hmm. but still not as big. The rumored new iPhone that everyone is reporting right. on. Yeah. With the rumored new iPhone. The dock connectors the that part feel that big to you? bothers me yeah, the most no, about I mean, the are iPhone. Are you using 5. an iPhone? I'm using a. Uh, what are you using? Are you using a Windows phone? Of course you are. Uh, yeah, I'm using the only Windows phone that Verizon has. Uh, Verizon, which is the worst. It's not a very good one. Yeah. 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 There we go. Oh. So, so uh, you say my phone's big. I say your phone's tiny. Well, all right. We don't have to start name calling. <laughs> uh, uh, I would rather have a 1280 by uh, 800 screen. I would rather. Uh, have you know all the? I, I it just seems well, like yeah, this. But, is, but you're, and look you're, how much thinner this. Phone you is. are the worst for phone, phone reviewer on the planet. I say this with love and affection, but you change phones every fifteen minutes. That's so I can review them. Yeah, I know, but I mean, and like, you love all of that's them. That's what makes me a good phone reviewer. Is actually I commit. For no, what? Two weeks? I'm like the bacon in breakfast. I'm committed. I'm not like some <laughs> egg. I am committed. Uh, and so no, I you, no, I've used this phone for months. You're totally the chicken, not the pig. <laughs> this is it's unusual. I should say that actually that is the biggest testament for for this phone I, is I, that you have actually held on to it for months instead of being on your seventh phone. And I think that other thing that's changed months. since the last iPhone a mm -hmm. year ago is the app ecosystem on Android is now roughly equivalent. Wouldn't you say the biggest issue with Android and i you know is is you're still talking about like ninety. Per, I, I I've, the number I saw a few weeks ago was eighty or or eighty five percent, ninety percent of Android phones are still at like 2.1. Yeah. It's fractal. Because old the, ones are. But, but if you buy a new one, you'll have Sure, but how many people OS. are buying the yeah, I don't know. It's 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 a it's an interesting question about well, how 100 many 100% of iPhone 3s are at the old iOS. What sure. does that mean? Well, no, there, there's a higher here. I think Henry likes to write those kind of headlines. Well, I know it's blinking. Interesting big. here is that that there these new Sam's, especially the Samsung phones, are really good. Yes. And they're not they're not as glitchy and they're not as wonky. I mean, a lot of the problem with early Android phones is they were incredibly wonky. They crash all the time. Yeah. Um, and so I think these are, I mean, the, the challenge for Apple is that they don't change a lot. I mean, for the first time I saw, I think, one of the Samsung phones, and I'm an Apple user for years and years in terms of the iPhone and stuff like that. I just happen to like it better. But for the first time, I was a little bit jealous, and it never happens, I have to say. It was the first mm. time I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool what was on it. And um, I thought, I doubt I will switch, but it definitely, they'll have to do something special in this new version for me to buy it. Um, and I definitely, it definitely was the first time I thought, well, they somehow have hidden the wonkiness of Android uh, uh, mm. in a good way. So that, that's that's really the point, is that they really have to up the game this time um, rather than just make small changes. But, uh, I think probably and, a lot and, of people And do you think they will? I mean, they, they're, they're notorious, Apple's notorious for surprising everybody. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, isn't it I what what is happening inside the the iPhone that is kind of the the edge there? That even if they have a, a, minim a minimalist and familiar design, that that means less than than what is you know in their <laughs> ecosystem with the App Store and what with series going to work? I think the iPhone is looking a little older. That's all. It just is looking a little less slick than it was when it first came out. And I think because I phones are so interchangeable now, as Leo is probably the most used of them, but I think people want something fresh. Um, and so fresh doesn't mean a totally different thing, but something that's not maybe a little thinner. I would prefer a thinner phone, maybe a bigger screen. Um, I think it's kind of table LTE, thing. which I guess the iPhone will yeah. probably have. Yeah. But bigger screen it has to have I, this screen is is not uh, it's too small so, it's too small and yeah. i think that that's probably and probably thinner and um you know, no matter what's inside, I think people want slightly different form factor. Just not tons, but just mm -hmm. you want something fresh to fresh. It hasn't been freshened up since it was uh, since a long time. Well, maybe we do but, agree but with Henry is, because the new iPhone uh, it's not screwed. And looks I think, very similar to the old one, and in fact, 
has one feature that I think a lot of people are going to be upset about. It changes the, the age-old 30-pin connector for a 19-pin yeah. connector. That's, Apparently, that's, again, all rumors. Yeah, the, and, and that's what it kind of comes down to. puts the, the headphone connector on the bottom of the phone next to the smaller dot connector, which may or may not work electrically right. with all of the existing hardware with or without an adapter. Um, I, I don't know. I'd be, I'd be curious. At this point, d does Apple think the design is iconic and they're afraid to change it? No, I don't think. No, not at all. <laughs> I, 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 the, the, the thing about the thing, I was just irritated by my new MacBook. I had to change out everything, which is right. irritating. But I don't think that's going to stop people from buying this. It's a question of there's a lot of very fresh, exciting phones from uh, using the Android system. And, and so that's, you know, and they will be from Windows. And so the question is uh, not from RIM, obviously, this Christmas again. Um, but uh, but it's it's a question of whether, you know, the, the regular users want something fresher. I know I do. Mm -hmm. um, and and I'm, I think, a, I, I'm a very loyal uh, iPhone user. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I mean, I've my, my buddy Steve Kovac works for Silicon Alley Insider, and like he was fighting with Henry. He was fighting with Henry over this. Oh, was he? Steve said, "Yeah, if you scroll down, you'll say my colleague Steve says you're I'm nuts." A more link bait, by the way. It's yeah. Like, oh no, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. To link to another thing inside <laughs> yeah, of Silicon Alley yeah, Insider. Yeah. But no, between these headlines and slideshows, it comprises of 25 percent of my conversation with him. <laughs> Microsoft has announced a new mouse that's just really interesting. Uh, what do you think about the Wedge Touch Mouse there, Ed Bot? Uh, that I I like it. It's it's interesting, it's, and they've and that's one of the things in, in terms of hardware design that they've done really really well through the years. Um, I've got a couple of the Arc Touch mouses here, um, and they're and they're really neat. And so they they do they have a, a good history with multi-touch technology. But I'm actually more interested in that keyboard, yeah. Um, especially for Windows 8, because I know a lot of the complaints that people have had about Windows 8 is that the um, you know the interface with a with a mouse and a keyboard is is somewhat awkward. And even when you learn it, uh, it it just doesn't sort of sink in. But if you, it, this one will have dedicated keys on it that are mapped to the Windows 8 interface. And so instead of having to, you know, move your mouse up into a corner and, you know, and, and uh, make the menu appear, you'll just be able to hit one of those dedicated keys and either go to the start screen or share something or search. And, and so that, I think, is something that might take care of some of the objections that people have to uh, the, to the Windows 8 interface. Uh, but, you know, they, they've they always... Microsoft has been doing great keyboards and mice for a long time, mm -hmm. almost un, almost unheralded. So I don't... This, this has a regular Windows uh, key on it with the new Windows logo, but there's another keyboard I think that has the charm... a key for the charms, for instance, which would be very nice. It's kind of hard to navigate to the charms. Uh, right. I, you know, I, I thought, I, and I suggested this at one point, that instead of, right now it's uh, uh, Windows key plus C is how you make the charge right. menu appear. And, and I, I thought, and I still think, that the tapping the Windows key should just make that menu appear. And then if you tap it again, it'll take you to ah, the start screen. That's um, a nice idea. And, I, and in fact, I'm hoping if anyone's listening and you're out there a developer, I'd like that like, utility to be available so that I could remap those those keys, um, uh, you know, on, a, on the Windows 8 yeah. interface. And, and collectively, you know, together we will make a small fortune. <laughs> we do know, we do have a date now for uh, Windows 8. It'll be uh, October, what is it, uh, 26th? 26th, mm -hmm. the day after the new iPad mini goes on sale. <laughs> 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 judging by what you said earlier. If but that's yes, correct. I and the, the interesting thing is that, that Microsoft's always said that the Surface R, Windows RT version of Surface will ship the same day. Same day. And then the, uh, and oddly, which th th that surprised me, that the the more conventional Windows 8 Pro version, which is kind of a, you know, it's a, it's a PC, the tablet form factor, and you already have those in the hinged touch keyboard and such but that will take another 90 days to uh come about and i, th hmm. I, I that was that was surprising to me but i wonder if that's to protect oems maybe so that uh, because microsoft's maybe no. no no i think it has probably more to do with um uh power management uh. you know the, the new you know they they 
there's probably some custom circuitry that's going in there. They have a lot of, of, that they need to do with the x86, x64 versions of Windows 8 and hardware to get them so that you can truly get all-day battery life with them. And mm -hmm. that's the real challenge. You know, putting putting it into a in, into that form factor isn't difficult. I've got a Samsung Series 7 here that's perfectly, you know, makes a perfectly good tablet. Um, but... It, you know, it heats up and the fan comes on and the battery life is five hours when you really need eight hours. And so that's, that I wonder if, if that's where the challenge is, where they're working with Intel and some of the chip makers to, to get that circuitry so that the Windows 8 Pro version will, will have the performance that they need. So uh, we're going to take a break. Patrick, you're not seeing the Olympics. Anybody else watching the Olympics? <laughs> yeah. I, a little bit. I, was, I tried to catch the 100 meter dash on uh on the ipad stream to the apple tv before i came up here but i couldn't that their ipad app is just it's pretty awful jank -tastic. nbc fail is the hashtag and uh it's an interesting uh, nexus between twitter and nbc we'll talk about that in just a little bit but first let's talk about audible.com audible of course our online bookstore we're such big fans of it boy i, I if again if the Diamond Club ever need somebody to do a <laughs> audio? <laughs> that would ruin my career. Actually, I mean, I do you just... think that you can carry the, the 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 Brianna Young character? Can you can no, you do the lady voice? No, it needs to be. A, uh, yeah, she should talk like Patricia Harkins Bradley talks. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me just try. No, you know, uh, we have a staffer, Eric Kesseldahl, who has a fantastic radio voice. Oh, no, maybe Eric could, could do it with me. Yeah, hey, the two of you. I was instantly lightheaded. My oh, heart right pounded, then. but I had to at least. Make an effort to keep it together. Oh. All right, I'm leaving. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll stop. You know, I have to meet my kids soon. So. Do you want to take off? You can take off. We're almost I'm done. Unless yet, you want to talk about yet. the Olympics and Twitter. Yes, sure. Absolutely. All right, all right. hold on just a sec. Uh, yeah. But first, a word about audible.com. And this will be quick. This is easy. This is painless. You know what I'm talking about. The best place to get audio books. 100,000 titles, fiction, nonfiction. Uh, you know, we're all busy these days. Who has time... Uh, to read. Uh, and yet reading is, to me, it was uh, one of my great joys in life. That's when, when I found Audible, and I found it literally 10, 11 years ago now. Uh, it was, it just changed my life because suddenly, you know, that time I spent in the car on the commute, the time I spent at the gym, the time I even I spent cleaning house and walking the dog could now be part of my reading time. And I just have to say, I'm so happy. My The new read, and I actually, uh, I hear this is an excellent audio book, and I will be reading this because Wednesday, Daniel Suarez is going to be on uh, Triangulation. We're going to interview him. He's the guy who wrote The Amazing Demon and uh, Freedom TM, which were gripping, and I listened to them on Audible. Kill Decision, his new one just came out, is of course on Audible. And uh, I hear a must listen. So this, I'm going to tell you how you can get this and maybe get, get, get De Demon too. For free. I'm going to get you two, yeah. not one, but two books at audible.com. Here's the deal. Go to audible.com slash twit2. You'll be signing up for the, the Platinum account. That's the one I use. That's two books a month. I think that's just about right. If you're if you're a heavy listener, it's perfect. <laughs> your first month's free. Your first two credits are free, and you can apply them to any of the books in the 100,000-strong Audible bookstore. But this would be a great one. Kill Decision from Daniel Suarez or his first book, Demon. Uh, if you had one more credit, you could do all three. But next month. Yeah, next month. You can't quit anytime. You're, the books are yours to keep. You pay nothing if you don't want to. But I think you're going to want to. This is just, to me, anytime you spend in the car, at the in the plane, traveling, it's just such a relief to have Audible. In fact, I, it's a, for me, it's a security blanket. I don't travel anywhere without Audible. Audible.com slash twit2. Yes, they do have 50 shades. Of course they That's do. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> They've got, and it's the number one download. I, I mean, maybe. I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll, Until I'll talk, the Diamond I'll to, Club. I'll talk to Patty. I'll see, I'll see what Patty's Patty Patty could read it. She could read it. She'd be awesome. Yeah. No, I'll tell you, I, I was on that flight that uh, I, I read the Diamond Club on. Uh, part of it was because I got to the end of Dark Force Rising of the Star Wars. Uh, the, oh, you the, recommended that the last Thrawn time. The trilogy, yeah, yeah, on Mac Break. They have new readings of it. Brand new. They just came out last month. Uh, they're awesome. But I forgot to download. Isn't that the, the worst feeling? Half part, of, and I'm on, on a plane. And That's it was the just worst like, no! feeling. No, what's Luke I know. Do? I have to read Diamond Club. <laughs> I know that crap. Oh. I, mean, I feel I feel so bad because I'm reading The Big Short by Michael Lewis. That's so a great far. book. Fantastic. Did you enjoy it? I know. 
the yeah, audio book of it's fantastic. Yeah, you know what? It has so much pertinence to today's uh, oh, internet. Man. It just is a lot, a well, lot of what's going on. You, Michael Lewis is untouchable. You know what Best I would do? I would read the first kitchen. one, The Liar's Poker. Uh, yeah, I've read which, it many times over and oh, over again. Oh, such a yeah. wonderful book. And he, in fact, refers to it at the beginning of the big mm -hmm. short, saying, you know, yeah. I wrote Liar's Poker to change Wall Street so it would never happen right. again, and it's worse. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. All this stuff about uh, just a lot of the stock manipulation. That would be, really and he's the guy who wrote Moneyball, which was a huge hit. Uh, the blind the side, fantastic. that's yeah. a big thing. There's, there's no uh, alabaster thighs in it, though. No. Oh, unless you think take people a note, rolling take a around. Take note, Mikey. People just rolling saying. around in a barrel of money. That's pretty sexy. <laughs> no, it's people looking over 10K the big, pretty much. The Big Short by Michael Lewis. Uh, and, of course, uh, you know, I'm sure they have his other book. Uh, as well, uh, let me just check. Liar's Poker. Liar's Poker. You should read one after the other. Yeah, they do. Yeah, both fantastic. Read, read Liar's he's, Poker. He's working That's... on a really interesting book about Obama. He's been embedded oh. in the Obama administration, so it should be interesting. Really, wow. one of the best reporters out there, great financial writer, really fantastic. gets through it. And he was, Liar's Poker he wrote because he was working. Yeah. Uh, at, with Was it Milliken or, uh, I don't know if he was working at Milliken's no, he company? No, was at... Um, not Kudair, but uh, that's a law firm. Yeah, Solomon Brothers. Solomon Brothers, yeah. that's right. So he was right, like in the middle. <laughs> that would yeah. be two good books. All right. If you don't want fiction, nonfiction, Liars, Poker, and The Big Short. Yeah. Two or, great and Michael now Lewis they books. have, they used to only have Moneyball abridged. Now they have Moneyball unabridged, oh, which wow. Moneyball is fantastic. You see, and this is the problem. Cool. You go to Audible and you can't stop. It's like candy. You got to eat more. <laughs> no, every day or every month when it's like, you know, I look forward new, to my renewal. New Audible Credits Day. Yeah. yeah. Yippee, Papa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> audible.com slash twit2 two, two books waiting for you absolutely free so what do you what's actually i'd be curious what you think uh kara swisher about the what's your take on this twitter issue a uh, journalist uh yeah. in england uh in LA working I, I said, for an English i said paper. they borked i said twitter i got a lot of pushback on the web because i said they bo that twitter borked on this one because it was a very public uh email this guy it wasn't his private email it was guy his, adams uh, is a, a writer for is it the guardian yeah uh, and yeah. he i thought it was fine i thought he what he did was fine i guess it was against their terms of service no it wasn't now and this is and this is very oh, well, interesting I, it was absolutely not was, so yeah, here's the deal so, so guy adams uh was as many of us are annoyed at NBC and how it was handling, particularly the opening ceremonies, published mm -hmm. the uh, e the com the business email address of an mm -hmm. NBC executive, uh, an address that he says was easily discernible. He also quotes in his letter to Twitter the terms of service that say if what you're publishing is already on the internet, you're off the hook. Yeah. That's why it wasn't a violation of the terms of service. Right. Well, what's interesting is that NBC sent in a complaint, and then it automatically it does that on YouTube too. Well, if you have there's a question over your videos, so I think it was I was told by someone on Twitter it was very automated initially, but I, I think even they think it was a mistake to take him I, down. Yeah. Well, Twitter. My understanding is that it went the other way around. Exactly. That, yeah. that, that Twitter <laughs> is the one who notified NBC and oh, uh, Twitter and, and the and in fact the blog post and apology from Twitter was written by Twitter's general counsel, which mm -hmm. suggests yeah. that they realize that they stepped in a, a big yeah. pile yeah. of of legal mess. Twitter's because. They, because what 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 they've what they've done is the same thing uh, uh, as a publisher. If you if you start paying attention to the content of things that people are posting on right. your service, right. then you start becoming responsible yeah. for other things that people post. You lose your safe right. harbor. Which is going to be tough on Twitter, harbor. for goodness sake. I mean, the stuff that goes on on there is much yeah. more uh, liable, I would assume, some of the things that are said right. back and forth. But, just, you know, I, I, sorry for getting the right things wrong. I, again, was away last week. But yeah. I think it borked. I mean, that's pretty much the, how I looked at it. And I think that um, I think that they understand that. And uh, But it was perfectly fine what he did. He was expressing an opinion about a really bad coverage. Well, and some of the concern was that NBC is, in, is kind of a hand in pocket with well, Twitter. Well, yeah, and that's... That's what it's funny when when you get down to the second to last paragraph on on Twitter's blog. It's like um, 
the team working closely with NBC around our Olympics partnership with NBC right. did proactively identify a tweet that was in violation of the Twitter rules and encouraged NBC to file a support <laughs> ticket with our trust and safety team to report the violation. And I can hear this conversation and it's like, yeah. this guy's hammering us. What are you going to do about him? It's like, well, you could do this. And then that once this is filed, once once the once the support ticket with trust and safety has been filed, trust and safety is obligated to basically hammer the account with a stick. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and I mean, I, I think they weren't understanding the difference between editorial and their business relationships, which I think is hard for a company like right. that. I mean, they they are an edit. They are a publisher um, and they also are a business. And so I think that's not very clear at that company uh, what that they are, that there are two. Possibly there should be a wall of some sort uh, between what's on Twitter and what the business relationships are. Um, so that's that'll be an interesting question for them going forward. Um, but, I mean, the guy had every right to do that, every single right. Well, I mean, the, the question was the email, right? It wasn't necessarily that he was saying that everything stank on ice. It was that he, he gave away this dude's email that uh, I'm sure people at NBC thought was less cool than he defined it as. That, you know, that it was easy to find on the Internet. They consider that more private than they, they probably realize it is publicly available. Uh, and so that's why they, they came at it in like a we were injured kind of oh, sense. Oh, don't you think that was just the excuse? The guy was exactly. doing something. I mean, exactly. I was involved in that because I was happened to be in Israel and I got to watch the whole thing and I was tweeting like, what the hell's going on with these this Voldemort attacking the Mary Poppins thing? I was like, confused. <laughs> and so uh, everyone was like, how are you watching it, Kara? And I said, I'm watching it in Israel. You know what I mean? And so it was, you know, and then I started insulting and then all these British people started insulting me and it went wow. <laughs> But it was, you know, I was like, okay, they're like, oh, it's British humor. You don't get it. I'm like, fine. It's not good. But anyway, so, uh, but, it, but it was interesting because the, um, I think then I started to notice all the Americans were like, why are you watching it? You know? And so I think that it was justifiable uh, in terms of what he was saying. And he definitely was, I was w reading him and thought he was the most effective Twitter on this issue um, in terms of, of jamming at home that NBC had screwed up. And I thought that it might've been that he was so effective that they decided to slow him down a little bit. Yeah. I, I guess I, I just, uh, like Twitter's all in an interesting position too, because they are really moving into Hollywood, <laughs> they're making a television show. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. there, there is kind of this um, interesting, you know, uh, I, I, I've been following a guy named Dalton Caldwell. He started uh, I Meme and uh, Pick Please, and he's started a new uh, response to, he, f he feels that a lot, not a lot of people, not especially third-party developers, feel like Twitter's turned their back on the people who created Twitter, the third-party developers, the mm -hmm. apps. They've, 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 they want people to go to the website because they want to make the money on the ads. They've become an ad company. And there are a number of people who say that was a kind of a mistake. Apparently, it was an internal battle at Twitter some years ago. Uh, yeah, there was. Should, it, it was it's like what's going on at Yahoo. Should we be a platform or should we be an ad company? Yeah, but Twitter, this has gone on before with developers. That's a problem. People mm -hmm. have really eating off their ecosystem a lot. There's a lot of businesses that have been formed off the back of what Twitter's doing, and now they're, they've they been tried at different times to put a stop to it, and now they're really putting a stop to it. And so they made the decision. I mean, I don't think there's a debate any longer. No. I think they're not, not allowing people to suck all this data out of their system. Um, and the question is, how important is this developer ecosystem to them or not? And it's, an, it's definitely a fantastic story. And uh, we had published some of the... Um, well, Dalton was also fighting with Facebook, which is interesting. He wrote a very, well, he actually was scathing. He said Facebook yeah. uh, essentially invited us in and, and threatened us and said, hey, we could uh, we could either hire, you know, do an acquire, nice buy your company. company. you got there. Be ashamed if something happened to it. Yeah. <laughs> and he was shocked. And he wrote a post about it. That didn't, oh, he's shocked by threat and large companies threatening small ones. That's, well, wow. I think, I, I, I think he, he wrote a, an open letter to Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, you can read it at daltoncaldwell.com, uh, telling the whole story about being threatened. And uh, he thought he was going to be demonstrating an iOS app and service app.net. And it turned out, uh, he said, it'd be, yeah, we could either crush you or we could buy you. What would you like? <laughs> That was a line Bill Gates used to use a lot. It was the first line of my first book on AOL. I mean, it's a, it's classic when big companies. Right. Right. So. so you say it's he's he's not naive to think that it's uh, no, otherwise. he's not naive. It was a very good letter, but it, I mean, this is what these companies, you know, they when they want something, they want something, and and in this case, I guess it's not quite like Microsoft because it's not uh, a monopoly at this point, right. but. You know. Well, one of the things Dalton's done, and I've joined it, uh, and actually gave him some money. He's trying to create a a paid 
not ad-based, but paid Twitter-like service with an open API. And he's asking people at join.app.net. He's doing kind of a fake uh, kickstart. He says, I don't actually need the money. I just want to make, I want to see if people are involved uh, mm. enough to make this worthwhile. So he's now pivoting app.net into a Twitter or Facebook or both competitors. Twitter. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be open. Um, it's actually very interesting. You know, this has been done before. Evan Prodromo, we've interviewed him, tried to do this yeah. with a status.net and Identica. It was originally Identica. He's a sharp entrepreneur. He hasn't had success all the time, but he's de definitely a sharp guy. Dar so Dalton. Cool. You're talking yeah. About, yeah. Fantastic entrepreneur. So I'm very impressed and I think he's right. And this is something I've been saying for a long time. And I would, I think that Twitter is more, should be more of a, a public utility than an ad service and uh and it has there's an opportunity for somebody to create that utility and uh, 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 and um this is interesting but the question is ease ease of joining and and getting the well now you have to pay for it so he says we well, don't have to worry about spam you don't have to worry about who's in there because you, it, it costs you money now they don't but, know but what how, how much, much it'll cost is that solving a problem you know that we don't that, 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 that well, if he's, if that he's promising that he's not going to, you know, I mean, like the classic problem was Facebook is where is my information going? Why do they keep confusing this? Why do they make privacy complicated? Why do I feel, you know, yeah. dirty every time I go there? Because I feel like all of this information of my life has been yeah. sucked out. Um, if the idea is that we're not going to have ads and we're not going to data mine and we're going to keep things, we're basically going to give you, you th for everybody who thinks they're actually going to Facebook to show up and hang out with their friends, we're going to give you an environment where you can go to Facebook and show up and hang out with their friends. Because it's, it's interesting watching some people who are extraordinarily savvy uh, about entrepreneurship and, and, and business and, and, and the big things we don't talk about, which is that the big money is, is mining the information yeah. on the backside, that if, if they're promising that, it makes it, it kind of really compelling. If there's a very, there's great saying that came from Metafilter, if you're not paying for it, you're the product. You're the product. And so Dalton's idea is, well, let's pay for it. And then we don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think it's a good idea. I support I gave him a hundred bucks. I, I guess I, my only question account, is, is, will it have enough people that we will get out of Twitter? Of course, that's the huge problem. We, right? yeah. And how many, how many Twitter clones have I joined? I mean that that's like a, a storied history. I want to see like the the Rocky <laughs> montage of Leo joining Twitter clones. <laughs> every one yeah, of them. I find, da, 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 Twitter, da. I find Twitter enormously useful. I do too. Oh, every and every I, day, no. a billion times a day, I am on Twitter. I love I Twitter and I love using it, and it is incredibly useful. And I think it is a public utility, and it needs to be treated as such. As you just also to. love Plurk. <laughs> Thank I like you, Plurk. Mr. And Trotsky. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say, there was a <laughs> shutter in the force before. down in San Francisco. A disturbance in the force. They don't like me anyway. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's see what's coming up. Uh, I want to let you go, uh, Kara Switcher, right, because I know you got to go get the kids. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Kara's at All Things D, and we'll have you back We're soon. We're going to go share some data with iTunes right now. Go awesome. share some data. And go buy Diamond Club, because you'll love it. I am already done. Already all the done. Gay, Thank you, Kara. All the gay cruises are reading it. Huge on the gay cruises. <laughs> You and me together, honey. We'll wear pastels. It'll be fantastic. I can't wait. Take care, Kara. Let's take a look at what's coming up in the week ahead. Our great Tom Merritt of Tech News Today has a look. Tom? Hey, thanks, Leo. Here's a look at some of the things we'll be keeping an eye on in the week ahead. Of course, coming up tonight, Sunday, 1031 p.m. Pacific, the Mars Curiosity Lander <laughs> will arrive one way or another on the surface of Mars. We're doing live special coverage of that uh, starting at 10 p.m. Pacific right here on Twit. But if you're watching this later, that will be in the Twit Live special feed as well. Uh, Wednesday, August 8th, the T-Mobile MyTouch and MyTouch Q are coming for 50 bucks. Also, T-Mobile getting the Samsung Galaxy Note for $250. And the Usenix Security Symposium kicks off August 8th and runs through the 10th. Thursday, August 9th, RIM's 4G LTE tablet comes. And Saturday, August 11th, Chevron WP7 unlocked Windows phones will relock. Ooh, Users get a free app what? hub, but that's your last day of the unlock. Uh, that, that and, of course, the Samsung Apple trial and lots of other stuff we'll be keeping an eye out in the week ahead. Back to you, Leo. Great show, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, that's uh, 1700 UTC TNT Tech News Today with Sarah Lane, I as actor, and of course Tom Merritt. And Jason Hell. And Jason Hell. I almost said, who's that? But now I remember he's the tall uh, guy. Yes. Right, I see him around the building. Uh, <laughs> Ow. <laughs> okay. Love you, Jay. Yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be fun. Tune in tonight for that. Are you excited about uh, that, Edbot? Do you like space? Are you into, into that stuff? I'm. I remember the moon yeah. landing like it was yesterday, yeah. and I've been a big. In fact, I was, and I remember the Challenger. 
oh, blowing God. up, and that was and and you know so the the highs and then yep. and then the lows, and this is a hopefully another high. Yep. Uh, I remember know, so, getting yeah, up. I, I was. I, I definitely want to watch. I this. was about 13 years old uh, when uh, Neil Armstrong took that first step on the moon, and that's that's an age where that influences you for mm -hmm. life. And like you, Ed, I very much remember watching the Challenger live. Mm -hmm. I was actually writing. I was in my, uh, writing in my living room, writing Mac software. I was homesick that day from yeah. from work. I was home on the couch. I had the flu and I felt horrible. And I turned on the TV, oh. and and that just made horrible times. You know, two orders of magnitude. I couldn't believe what uh, I was seeing. Yeah, yeah. No. It's like that can't have happened. Uh, but so this, so this is. But there's there, there have been in the space program. There have been so many more really uh, uplifting, yes. noble, wonderful moments. And I think this is going to be one of them, especially uh, given you know the sort of abandonment that we've had of this of the manned space program. That uh, this is something to at least see. Um, you know, the, the possibility of something we've never seen before. I agree. It's very exciting. I'll tell you what, space to me is on a roll. Yeah, I, I was, I'm, I'm a huge SpaceX fan. Uh, I actually drove up. I just, Did you? Yeah, I, I saw, you watched the, launch? I saw mm -hmm. the, the Dragon capsule that wow. docked with the ISS launch uh, from Canaveral. Cool. Uh, I, it, I'm so thrilled. It's just such a great yeah. time to care about space. And I think the reason why we've cared less about it is because there hasn't been a lot of you know, punch in the gut, relevant, you know, kind of space explorations, uh, you know, over the last 30 years. And now we are entering, uh, in my opinion, a, a golden age for that. And, and I hope you're right. You know, we are, mm. are going to see with companies like SpaceX right. and cheaper, you know, and hopefully if, if Elon Musk is correct, reusable rockets, uh, you know, this is going to be a more regular part of our lives and we can push the exploration uh, for the human race in, you know, into just fantastic amazing places in our lifetime which is something that's fascinating and, and super cool so i'm pretty i'm, I'm pretty excited this. and we put some and, really and, good and, coverage and, together for uh, tonight and, and yes. by the way leo i think nbc is going to have the the landing on tuesday yes uh, yeah so edited slightly but they'll have commentary content. so but, we all understand it brilliant <laughs> incisive commentary yeah i'm gonna leave that as my closing <laughs> <laughs> thank you ed bot great to have you here i really appreciate it you catch ed bot on zdnet of course where uh, he, he reports on Microsoft and other things. You're going to be reporting a lot on the uh, trials, I'm sure, of Samsung and, yep. uh, and a lot more. I, it's great to Thanks, see you Lee. again. I just, I just adore you. Thank you, Ed. Take care. Thank you, Ed. If you bye missed bye. anything on Twit this week, we had a bunch of great shows, including you, Patrick Norton. Watch. <laughs> be afraid. Previous on Twit. Do you want a faster gaming PC? I do. Do you want to spend all your money on a gaming PC? No. Do you want to waste your money when you're buying your next upgrade for hardware? No. Then you should be watching Twits This Week in Computer Hardware. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ryan Shroud. <laughs> that was a Gizmo. big audience you guys had. The fans lined up outside oh. the... Oh, yeah. Waiting to see... They're so excited. And I gave them 10 bucks to walk back and forth. Here's the fan. <laughs> Oh, 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 Alfred E. Newman. NSFW. Wow. This is good. Yeah, this was two weeks ago. Get sick up. Tech News Today. And we've got something we like to call the Calendoomer. That's when a calendar and a rumor love each other very, <laughs> very <segments>. much. <laughs> if you missed this week on Twit, you missed a lot. That was the band Ready, Set, Go. They Get were Set, Go. Get, Get set, set, Go. Go. Yeah. They were great, and that was the theme from uh, Game, Game of Thrones. Of Thrones. Whoa. Yeah. No, they killed it. Uh, that was two weeks ago uh, on the show. We actually took this very spot. This is where they uh, played. And and thanks to the amazing Boy, they good. staff, uh, Chad and, and Jammer B and everybody, they turned this roundtable set into a, a viable live uh, you know recording space, and they were great. Go watch that episode. We left They're it fantastic. out of the promo last week, and I said, you got to get it in the promo because that was one of the best things we, uh, we've we done here in the studio. So it's two weeks ago, NSFW. Two weeks ago. Uh, last week was the launch of the Diamond Club. So, so man, you know. if you're missing NSFW, you're missing a ton. <laughs> not for the little kids, not for the little ones. Save that for the next time you're on a gay cruise. But it's really <laughs> worth listening to. Twit.tv slash NSFW audio, but do watch the video. There's yeah, the video. We, we do a lot on video. And I, I, I've i just uh, gotten word that uh, I will be part of the Mars Curiosity uh, Are you gonna coverage Are you gonna? tonight. I'm just going to hang gonna out. You're going to stick around? Yeah. Awesome. So Tom Merritt. And, awesome. Uh, we, we might even, if his plane arrives on time from uh, Jakarta, we might even get a Brian Brushwood as well. He's in Jakarta? He, uh, yeah, it was for in a, Indonesia a for gig? the last week. For yeah. a gig or vacation? 
uh, gig. Yeah. Wow, that's impressive. He so, gets around. We'll see. It happened. Yeah. Veronica Belmont and uh, this guy here, Patrick Norton, are the great hosts of Techzilla, T E K Z I L L A dot com. It's a great show. You got to watch. Thank you so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fun. Shark Week this week? Shark Week next week. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was joking. What are you going to do? You show, I, I, I had to upgrade we, your shark. And no, 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 no. We, we actually, uh, there's been an interesting, uh, the, the, basically there's been a, a sur the survey of Pacific predators uh, top and we talk about how they use digital technology to actually track sharks and other uh, uh, predators in the Pacific and found some incredible stuff over the last 10 years and actually some of the technology they're using to figure out some of the last of the really amazing secrets about uh, white sharks. That's See, I awesome. like that. You're taking Shark Week to a whole new level of geekiness. Of actual geekiness. <laughs> uh, next week on the show, Kevin Rose will be here to talk about wow. uh, the new dig.com, what he's doing at Google and a whole lot more. I kind of like the new dig.com. It's like Pinterest for tech news. It looks it looks good. I yeah. mean, I think, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what, we had a, you know, when, when the Diamond Club thing broke on on Reddit, you know, you kind of got to look at, you know, our, our, we got sort of the both barrels front page of Reddit uh, uh, treatment. And, you know, it, it's one of those things Brian pointed out, and I don't know if I totally agree with him, but I see his point that you're starting to get that same kind of maybe aggressive, mean mentality that was on dig before dig kind of, the edge up, is back. You're you know? saying Reddit's getting mean? Well, more. I mean, I guess I, I'm not a gigantic redditor. Right. You know, like I, I'm. I'm. And don't knock my redditors, baby. Oh, I love. I love Reddit. I mean, like we've we've used Reddit for right. for a lot of stuff, but I'm I've usually only been on Reddit's where Good they've side. been for our communities. Oh yeah, use... you don't want to make enemies, which is why I'm shutting you up right now. So <laughs> <laughs> get at me, dog. <laughs> His name is. What should I? What should I? Uh, his name is Dan Benjamin. You can catch him on Five by Five. Exactly. No, there we go. <laughs> Steve Kovac at Steve Kovac on Twitter. Send all your hate mail. Thanks for joining us. We do Twitter every Sunday afternoon, three o'clock until dusk. <laughs> it goes all day, all night. We might stay to Lamar's Landing. I don't know. No, it's, yeah. We've got like 80 people here. We're going to serve them all hot cocoa. Let's feed we're, them. We're doing it all night. The poor people are just dying. They've been here for so long. <laughs> And we only have one toilet, so we're gonna we're gonna stop now. But do tune in 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time, 2200 UTC if you want to watch live on Sundays. But we make audio and video downloads available after the fact, always on all the usual places. I get a lot of questions, from people. What's the best way to make sure that I'm getting counted? Because I want to make sure that people mm -hmm. know that Twit has an audience, and we we do we do have a fantastic audience. And you know, any way you watch it is fine uh, with me. We get we'll count every single download. The only reason I say it's a good thing to subscribe is so you don't miss an episode. And uh, I'd hate for you to miss anything that way. Uh, you make sure you get it automatically <laughs> in the feed there. So subscribe on anything that you can use to subscribe. It doesn't really matter. Instacast, Dog Catcher, even that iTunes uh, thing. Sure, they use that too. Thank you, everybody. We'll Thank see you. you next time. Another twit is in the can. Thank you, everybody.